Hello everybody, can you hear me? Let me know how I sound in the chat. Uh, I'm not sure how the audio levels are. My, my stream thingy is acting a fool. And uh, not showing me my audio levels right. So please let me know if the music is too loud or too quiet. And how I sound. And now sound is coming out of somewhere else. Oh gee whiz. But I'll be on in just a moment. I gotta, you know the dealio. I gotta play with Jimbo first. It's, it's legal. It's just the law, you guys. You don't want me to get in trouble with the law. The law of Jimbo. Right, bud? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, all right. We're gonna, we're gonna play with Jimbo for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, let me know how it sounds.
Okay, Jimbo. Let's get rocking and rolling. But actually, you just stay right there and look cute. Wow. What a cat. Hello, everybody. How you doing? How's it going out there? How is it going? Looks like I have my camera just a little bit off. So let's just go boop. There we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday, and I hope you had a great week. I know it's been like a week, uh, like two weeks since the last stream. Classic me for getting to clean his glass glasses before I hit go. Um, Jimbo is such a good cat. Such a good cat until he's not, but hopefully for the stream he will be. Oh my gosh, the cat cam is perfect, wow. Um, okay, well, today... <laughs> Hello, hey Seth, hey Naughty Flowers, hey Katrina, hey Plant Sinner, Plant Sinner. <laughs> hey everybody. Okay, so today we are gonna be crocheting the next pattern in our seasonal crochet kit, uh, and we're gonna be making a, uh, a giant turkey leg today. And I haven't made this, I've only made a couple of these, so it should be an interesting pattern to re-remember because it's been like a, like a, three weeks since I recorded the, the video for this. So that's the last time I made one. So it's been a second. So it'll be fun to like refigure it out with y'all. Um, I'm, I'm excited for that. First, let's talk about um, all the things that you're going to need for this pattern, uh, different ways you can support the channel if you're interested in supporting, and then we'll just get crocheting. Uh, I think today we're gonna be voting a lot on like what kind of, um, uh, what like faces to make and maybe we'll add like a little hat or something to it i don't know we'll we'll think of some ideas um but first if you uh let's go with the materials actually let's start with the materials uh it'll kind of hopefully naturally transition i'm running a little bit slow but i'll catch up i'll catch up my coffee's still running through my blood this magnetic pin is attaching to all the other pins recently. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is the materials. Now we're gonna start with the crochet hook. Today we're gonna be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. You guys know me, it's my favorite hook to use for the yarn that we're gonna be using, which is our Club Crochet Amigurumi cotton yarn, which is a worsted weight. So that's why we're gonna be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook today. We'll need a pair of scissors, of course, for the whole cutting part. We'll need a darning needle for uh, sewing in ends. Now, to be honest, this pattern is actually made with almost no sewing at all. It, you just need to sew in the very uh, the end of it. So it's actually pretty easy to sew together. Um, if you want to get the pattern for today, uh, you can find it right here, clubcrochet.com slash um, holiday hooks. It's also linked in the top of the chat, clubcrochet.com slash turkey leg will take you directly to the pattern. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this pattern, obviously, feel free to ask. That's kind of the point. I'm here to help. Um, okay, so if you want to get some materials, or let's talk about... Let's try that again. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm going to be pulling from our seasonal crochet cut holiday hooks. And look, we still have a pretty decent amount of yarn to work through uh, for this holiday. And we're already like halfway through the season. So we got a lot to make. Uh, so, of course, you're going to need your brown for the uh, main color of our turkey leg. You'll need your white yarn for the bone of the turkey leg. We still have a pretty solid amount of white yarn left over as well. Um, and then if you want any other colors, like maybe we'll use some orange for adding like cheeks or some kind of like uh, detail to our pattern. So we'll throw that to the side as well. Um, you'll also need safety eyes. I'm going to be using eight millimeter safety eyes in this pattern. So we'll use the eight millimeter eyes from the kit. And then you'll definitely need some black thread for adding the uh, face, the mouth specifically. 
Um, okay, so that's all the materials that we're gonna need from our new kit. So we'll go ahead and put that to the side. If you'd like to get a kit like this, it's a great way to support the channel. Um, there's a bunch of them available now. Isn't it cool that when we started these seasonal crochet kits, we had none, and now we have three, and they're still coming. In fact, next season's kit is gonna be available for pre-order very, very soon, by the way. Um, I've been working on the patterns for it, and it's really cool. I'm, I'm very excited to share it, but just so you know, Pre-orders are coming out soonish. Um, this is a great way to support the channel though. If you wanna support the channel, um, let's talk about a few different ways other than the seasonal crochet kit. Although this seasonal crochet kit is definitely like one of the best ways uh, to support the channel. It comes with a membership to the site, all the materials you need to make all the different patterns we're making. Um, and then I'll be coming out with new patterns for this kit even after the kit is uh, is done. So I don't know, it's just kind of like a fun, fun thing to crochet along with us. So we'll go ahead and put this to the side. Um, other ways you can support the channel. Uh, we have merch and kits in the store. Uh, in fact, so first off, we got a bunch of different pins available. Um, these are our seasonal crochet pins. A new one is coming out for the next season soon. It's going to be a little donut. I'm very excited. Uh, but these are available in the shop. And this season's pin is actually magnetic. So it actually also works as a refrigerator magnet on top of just being a cool little pin. So we'll go ahead and put these to the side. We've of course got Jimbo pins and, and uh, logo pins, rainbow logo pins, uh, little burb pins. They're very cute. I suggest you get one. They're fun. Um, okay, so we got crochet hook, materials. Oh yes, the last thing today. We have a new sale going on right now. If you wanna get our brand new, whoop, now I just kind of like shoved everything in here, but our brand new starter kits. Our starter kits come with all the materials you need to get started with crocheting. This is a great option of kits for someone in your life that you've been wanting to get into crochet that hasn't yet had a chance to do it because it comes with all the things you need, the crochet hook, uh, the darning needle, and a bunch of different yarn, or a bunch of yarn to make a bunch of different projects. Now the projects kind of like work their way up and this kit is available uh, for 25% off now. It's a flash sale. So it's only available for 25% off for uh, this week only. And then it'll be coming back for Black Friday, but supplies for this kit especially are very limited. So get them while you can. They, I guarantee you these are gonna run out. I, I know they will because I did not get a lot made because I'm a doofus and I should have gotten more made, but I didn't. Um, so if you want one of these kits, I would get it now. It is 25% off uh, for a week. Uh, and yeah, it makes all the different kinds of different things. You learn how to make granny squares and little bows. You learn how to make uh, coasters. And then amigurumi, we're gonna make little ball guys. They're called, uh, I'm calling these guys goomies for right now, but I still need to um, rework. I wanna redo the video tutorial. There is a nice video tutorial for it, but I wanna make a new one with shiny new camera. Um, let's see, and then little bows and stuff like that. Uh, it just kind of like works your way up to learning how to crochet. I'm really proud of it. Uh, I think it's really cool. It goes along with our Crocheting 101 series. And again, it's available for 25% off uh, for this week only. So get it while you can. Okay, I think that's all the little things and bobs and bits. Oh wait, <laughs> just kidding. If you also would like to support, Here's some other, even better ways to support. First off, like this video down below. Just like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know the dealio. <laughs> doofus, Doofus is in the chat. Hey, Doofus. Uh, <laughs> um, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's just a really easy, super free, cheap way to support. Um, you can also get a membership. Uh, members get access to future patterns. They get access to the exclusive library of tutorials. There's a brand new pattern in the previews that I'm not really gonna spoil too much because um, it's for next season. Let's see, do I even have one made right now? I don't even know. I only made, I made it literally last night and I throw it onto the, into the previews like last night with no pictures or anything. So. If you'd like to try out one of the new preview patterns, it's available now. Um, you do need a membership level to access it. And then the last way to support is if you really like what's going on here, you can tip. It'd be really cool. Your name will come up right here and it'll be awesome. And yeah, uh, today, whatever tips we get are gonna go into our fantastic 
fish bowl and I'm pretty sure today we're filling this guy up. And so next live stream, we're gonna do a big, gigantic starter kit, or I mean, um, seasonal kit giveaway. So yeah, that's the that's the dealio. Um, I think that's everything. Oh yeah, uh, if you wanna tip, you can go to clubcrochet.com slash tip. Um, all right, I think that's everything I wanted to say today. If I'm forgetting anything, you guys let me know in the chat. Uh, speaking of, hello chat, hello Sage Crochet, Doofus, Alice, Seth, Cooper. How's everybody doing today? Okay, so let's get crocheting. Let's start by pulling up the pattern itself. Um, this pattern is pretty fresh. I really, really like it uh, because there's almost no sewing at all. And I made, um, there's a few parts of this pattern that I'm really uh, proud of. How I designed it. Um, it was actually one of uh, one of the few patterns that was a one and done. Like I made it for the first time, and I was like, "Yep, that's how you make this pattern," <laughs> and it was like perfect. I tried to fix it up, but I just kept coming back to the original pattern, and I'm just really, really proud of it. Um, okay, so let's start by making the bone for our turkey leg. The turkey leg is actually made with a bone actually inside the turkey leg. Now, as I go through this pattern, by the way, I'm not gonna be teaching how to crochet it because I do already have a full length video tutorial available at clubcrochet.com slash turkey leg. Uh, but uh, we are just gonna be crocheting it along with y'all. If you do have any questions though, you get stuck at any point and you want to ask for some extra help, uh, that's kind of the point of this. So if you need extra help and have specifics that you want to uh, see how to do a certain part of the pattern, um, just let me know in the chat and I'd be more than happy to help out. Um, let's zoom it in just a bit. Just a little bit. All right, but yeah, we're making, we're making toiky legs. You know, it's the perfect pattern for all those vegetarians out there that can't have turkey on Thanksgiving. We get to make turkey legs. I've been working a lot this week on uh, next season's patterns. I'm very excited. I've been talking a lot with uh, Drewby Zoo, and I need to, uh, I've been meaning to talk a lot more with Philip uh, from Sir Pro Gray, because they are both doing collaboration patterns for next season's kit. And uh, Drew was, Drew and I were talking about his pattern, and I'm really excited to see what what he's gonna make. He, he's got a lot of ideas. <laughs> and I was like, just choose one and let me know so I can make the other ones because he had a lot of really good ideas. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I should crochet Tupac? <laughs> Heck yeah. That'd be dope. <laughs> I, I should crochet Tupac. Um, what is the number one best way to support Club Crochet? Uh, probably with a seasonal crochet kit I, I or an annual pass actually an annual pass is probably the best absolute best way to support um, if you're able to purchase it but it's kind of a lot um, it does get you a new seasonal crochet kit mailed to your door every three months um, you know for the start of the next season so January 1st will be the next seasonal crochet kit uh, titled sweet stitches um, I'm really excited. Actually, I should get y'all's opinion on some stuff for next year. Uh, I spent this week kind of starting to plan out the next year's kits. So I had the first four planned before the year started. Um, and and by the way, the club crochet year for me is starting on, you know what, I think I made this too big. One, two, three. Yeah, I did. I've, I'm. I've been making too much mini gurumi and now I'm working with eight single crochets into a magic loop instead of six because I'm running on autopilot when it comes to that. I that's my that's how I start my mini gurumi patterns because I'd like to start it with a little bit more um, stitches in the beginning. So that's why I did that. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Ba -ba 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 -ba. I lost track. I lost track of where I was. Where am I? Where am I? Um, oh yes, I've been planning the next year's kits. So I try to plan them, uh, the year ends at the end of January, February, March. March, uh, or April 1st is the beginning of the next year's uh, collection, basically. Um, 
So, uh, season five will start April 1st, and I've been thinking about all the different seasons for next year, and I thought maybe I'll give you guys a little bit of a sample of the first two seasons of the new year, seasons uh, five and six, and get your guys' opinions on them, uh, especially getting your opinions on names, because one of the names I'm having a very difficult time uh, coming up with. So, season five, uh, for all y'all uh, out there that are looking forward to it. Uh, well, actually, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm bouncing all over the place. Season four, which is the next season, we're currently in season three, Holiday Hooks. Season four is gonna be titled Sweet Stitches. We're making a bunch of candies, um, baked goods, uh, anything that is sweet and delicious, we're putting into a season of of patterns from January, February, and March. So all of the first three months of the new year are gonna be all about candy and sweets. I'm really excited for that one. Then after Sweet Stitches, we've got, uh, now name is pending, okay? So this is where I need your guys' opinions. I need feedback on the names of these kits. The next season after that is gonna be called Spaced Out because we're making stuff from outer space. We're gonna be making rockets, UFOs, um, uh, planets. We're gonna. I'm gonna be adding a bunch of new planets to our uh, color change planets. So the planet Earth obviously is gonna be one of them. But I want to also do Mars and Jupiter and maybe even Venus. Uh, so yeah, I want to do a bunch of different planets. Um, and I'm thinking of calling it Spaced Out. Uh, we'll be making an alien or two. Um, a few different kinds of rocket ships. Uh, I'm sure we'll design a rocket ship live on a live stream, stuff like that. Uh, and then every season, uh, at least so far and in the next year, is going to include one special, like, um, special material. Um, and I'm just going to tell you, I'll tell you what the next season's special material is, um, but I won't tell you what spaced out special material is. But this way it'll give you like an idea of like where I'm kind of going with it. So next season, hold on, let me grab one actually. Next season on top of all the materials to make all the things from the season, um, there's gonna be one extra special material that's included so that you can, um, ooh, a tardigrade. Oh my God, a mini groomy tardigrade, Valerie. Or Valkyrie, you are genius. That's a great idea for Spaced Out because tardigrades are like one of the only things that can survive in outer space, right? I love that idea, Valkyrie. That's a very good idea. I'm gonna definitely consider that. Um, uh, anyhow, what was I saying? Oh yes, uh, the special material in season four, Sweet Stitches, is going to be a squeaker. Uh oh, I hope that didn't wake Jimbo up. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> it's gonna include a little squeaker to add to your uh, to your crochet. So it's gonna be like whatever crochet you wanna add it to. Um, it'll also include keychains and stuff like that. But this is what I would consider is the special material in the season, uh, it comes with the squeaker. So as an example of special materials that'll come in each season. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking the name being spaced out. Let me know what you guys think of that name in the chat. Uh, but the and I think spaced out is a pretty good name. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the name uh, unless I come up with something better. Um, but for now that's gonna be the name. Now the season after that is the one that I really need some feedback on. So um, after spaced out starting in April, May, June, July 1st, we're gonna be doing um, we're going back to the prehistoric baby. You know it. you know it. The time is nigh, well, almost, July. The time is nigh in July. We're going back to the past. We're gonna go and do a bunch of different Yarniverse. Ooh, into the Yarniverse. Oh, Zoe. See, I knew you guys were gonna come out with great names. That's a great name. That's a great name. Oh my gosh. How did I think about that? Hold on, I gotta write that down. I gotta write it down. I love that. I really, really like that. That is going to be a strong contender. Into the Yarniverse. Okay. I really, really like that idea for a name. Okay. 
Um, yes, yeah, so after that, we're going back to the prehistoric. We're going to be doing uh, dinosaurs. There's going to be new dinosaur patterns. Uh, we're going to be making volcano. And then the big thing that's coming out in July, uh, along with the new seasonal crochet kit, is we're going to be launching Lava Run as a Kickstarter. So I'm going to be doing a Kickstarter at the same time as the uh, season six goes live. That's the plan, at least. Um, I've got a lot of work to do for Lava Run to be ready. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what Lava Run is, it is a board game that I've been working on for the dinosaurs where you uh, control a little dinosaur and try to escape a volcano. I'm currently playtesting it, actually. I think you can playtest it by going to lavarun.com or clubcrochet.com slash lavarun. I'm not really sure where it is just yet. Um, I really need to create a better like system for playtesting it. That's what I'm kind of going to be working on next week. Um, but the point of all this is that uh, I need a name for this season. I don't know what to call the, the new season of crochet kits that's the dinosaurs, back to the dinosaurs, back to the prehistoric. Um, I don't know, like the name that I had thought of, uh, but Jules wasn't really a big fan, was Fossilized Fibers. She was like, eh, it's not, it's fine, I guess. And I was like, yeah, it's not the best. So if you have any name ideas for a seasonal crochet kit based around dinosaurs, I am all ears. I really would love some suggestions. Uh, and then in that season, obviously, we're going to be making some new dinos and stuff like that. Uh, as well as having a board game with everything. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah, uh, Crochandro has an idea. So in the meantime, while y'all are coming up with any kind of name suggestion for the dino kit, uh, Crochandro, what is your question? How can I help? And then while y'all, while you're coming up with your question, I am going to connect these two halves together starting in the next stitch oh dude oh shoot i'm so sorry we got two tips here Ooh, jurassic hooks is not bad that's a good start back in twine dude see i knew you guys were gonna be here i'm writing that down back in twine is a good one and then what was the other one jurassic hooks I like back in twine. That's a good start. That's a really good start. Okay, um, but before before I continue this bit, uh, and Crescendo, still let me know your question. Um, land before twine, guys. Before twine is so good. You guys are so good at this. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta give y'all credit for this in the <laughs> in the kit. Um. Uh, uh, okay, wait, wait, sorry, I'm, I'm like bouncing all over the place. First off, Cushandro, am I supposed to be making two of the bone end thingies or am I supposed to do something else? No, actually, it's all made in one piece. So what we're doing here is you just make two of these, like the, the top of the bone, basically. We're gonna connect them together. I'm about to connect them together and then it's gonna go up and then at the very end, I'm gonna do some fancy footwork to make the other end of the bone. So it'll end up looking like, um, let's see, do I have one finished? Um, here. It'll end up looking like this. So it's actually a little tiny bone with uh, two ends. So we're currently working on this side. See, I've made two of these ends. We're gonna connect it together, work up, and then on this end, we're gonna do some fancy stuff to make another bump in a different way. Um, so yeah, that's what we're currently doing. Uh, I hope that helps. Let me know if that helps for you, Kushandro, uh, or if you need a little bit more um, uh, advice there. Uh, okay, tips. Um, thank you guys so much for your support. Let me start with, um, okay, wait, we're filling up our, our pot here. So we wanna add a few more things um, just to finish up this, and then we're gonna do a big giveaway next live stream. Let's go ahead and add, let's see, what do we not have in here? Oh, you know what? I took some things out, actually. I took this one out because I needed to take pictures of it, um, the jellyfish, and I think I took this guy out. So we're gonna go ahead and add both of these back in. Those ones don't count, though. 
Um, the ones that do count, however, let's see, we got... Da, 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 da. Yeah, you know what? It's the last, it's the last of it anyhow, right? Let's, let's add something big. Okay, so we got for Mr. Cooper. I'm, I'm sorry, let's start, let's start uh, with Tina's. For Tina, we're gonna add our adorable little sailor octopus that has been waiting to join the crew uh, for the longest time. So we're gonna add this sailor octopus. I think what I'm gonna do actually is we'll leave it on screen for you. So that way, you know, you can see it. And then we'll add it at the very end of the live stream. So we got this for Tina and for Mr. Cooper, we're adding uh, Alice the Anglerfish. I think that's the name, right? Alice the Anglerfish, Angie. Angie the Anglerfish, that's their name. Uh, the biggest the biggest pattern from season uh, three or two, two. I'm rem I, I need to do better at naming or at remembering the numbers of the seasons. Um, so we're gonna add this to the kit because, or to the, to the pot because uh, we're done with it anyhow. Let's go big or go home. And this is to say absolutely thank you so much, Cooper. You were like 90% of that uh, fishbowl was Cooper. So everybody in the chat, thank you, Cooper, because we're doing a giveaway for a seasonal crochet kit next week because of Cooper. So thank you again, Cooper. So we'll go ahead and add that to the background too. Um, okay. Back to this, um, where were we? Where were we? Okay, no, we're good, we're good. Uh, okay. But but really though, where, where what was I talking about? Does anybody remember? We were talking about the name for the dinosaur kit for a little bit. Um, what, uh, the land before twine, which is such a good name. I, I am so, dude, shout out again to Zoe and Amy. Hold on, I'm gonna write that down. Amy and Zoe. Because y'all are getting credit. If that's what I end up going with for the name, y'all are getting credit. Um, because that is such a good idea for a name and I can't believe I didn't think about it. Uh, all right. Back to this, let's see, where were we? I think we go into this stitch here. And we go single crochet nine. Okay. Ooh, all right. And yeah, like I was saying before, uh, there is a brand new pattern in the preview patterns, by the way. Uh, there is no pictures for it. So I'm very curious to see how you guys make it without a picture. Um, and that's not like a taunt or anything. I, I legitimately want to see if you can make it without a picture because if you can, that means that it's written well. Um, so if you wanna try out, test out a new pattern that isn't even, uh, I haven't even showed you yet, um, that's for next season's kit, uh, go check it out in the preview patterns. Um, okay, one, two, three, we're skipping three, and then we continue on into this stitch right here. One, two, three, skip a stitch right there. Skip three, yes, okay, to connect the two halves. All right, I remember how to make this now. See, and then now that you've connected these two, now we sew them together using this end. And also, I think I can just cut these ends, right? Yeah, I can just cut them. We'll use that for stuffing a little later. Surprise pattern. Am I gonna do mini Gurumi, more mini Gurumi? That is actually the new testing testing uh, preview pattern is a new mini Gurumi for next season. So the answer is yes. We definitely will be doing mi more mini Gurumi. Um, and there's gonna be more mini Gurumi this season too. Uh, I want to make little tiny lights, uh, like Christmas lights, um, and then a little, I want to try doing an itty bitty snowman. Uh, so that's that's the other ones that I am planning on working on. I also kind of want to do a dreidel. Um, I don't know if I can do a little tiny dreidel, but I do want to do one. 
and I want to try to make it that, so that you can actually use the dreidel, so you can actually spin it. So that that is like a stretch goal for this season. Uh, is a is a dreidel pattern, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I can get there. Um. Okay. Yeah. Twiz. I'm excited to see if you can do the new pattern without any help from pictures. I think you can do it. Um, okay. One, two, three. Yeah, I actually made the... I made a light somewhere, but I can't find it. I made it the other day, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. And then, like, I put it somewhere, and then I was like, where did I put it, you know? Oh, here it is. Here it is. I knew I had it somewhere. Here's the prototype for the light. Um, so you kind of see how it, it would work up. So it's a less... It's another one of these patterns that's less than 100 stitches and no sewing. Um, and then the idea is it, you make the loop as you're making it, and then that way you can just string a bunch of these onto something and then have a bunch of lights. It's a little bit rough of a preview. You can kind of see how it just, it needs a little bit of love, like up here and then, yeah, it just, it needs a little bit of work. So uh, I, I'll work on this. Uh, I'll try to work on this actually tomorrow. Um, well, I've got some downtime because I'll be in LA. Jules is doing improv classes and I'm joining her just to uh, get out of the house a little bit. Okay, so where was I here? We were, well, we did one and eight more. So one. that there there we go okay yeah we're definitely on track um, all right I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of different yarn just as a stitch marker because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose track we'll use this yellow yarn from last week that was left on the floor because I'm a messy boy It almost can double as a strawberry, actually. Um, that's actually one of the patterns in next season that we're going to be doing. We're going to be coming back to the giant strawberry from uh, Drooby Zoo next uh, next uh, season. Okay, so now I'm on. I got to start using my check marks. I'm on round five. One, two, and three. Yeah, that'll work. And then make this a whole one. Ah, wasn't looking. Oopsies. Fix that up. There we go. How's your guys' week been, by the way? Hope you've had a wonderful week. I've had a pretty good one. Um, let's see. I I also started doing improv classes. So I started doing that recently. That was that's been pretty fun. Very scary, uh, but very fun. I haven't taken classes for really anything since college, so it's very interesting being back in a class. It's not really like a classroom, you know, because it's improv, but uh, it's still kind of a class. Um, let's see what else happened this week. This week, uh, me and a bunch of other Amigurumi uh, people on Reddit have been trying to get an Etsy channel or Etsy shop taken down that uses AI to make crochet patterns and then sells them. And they're really, and then a bunch of people are peed owed at these artists, at this quote unquote artist, because he doesn't even know how to crochet uh, and he's just throwing up crappy patterns online. So that's been a little frustrating this week, but uh, you know, us in the subreddit, the Amigurumi subreddit are doing our best there. If you're curious about that, go to the subreddit for Amigurumi, r slash Amigurumi. It'll be one of the top posts there is uh, all about it. So uh, I don't really want to get too much into it in the live stream though. Um, okay, one, two, three, four. We did our invisible decrease and then one, two, Seven. So 
So this should be an invisible decrease also. Okay. Okay, we're good. Yeah, see the pro the to get into it just like a little tiny bit, Katrina, the situation is that this person is using like AI to make a picture of a fake pattern and then goes to Fiverr and pays for some buddy on Fiverr to make a pattern for this AI and then just sells sells it online as if it was their pattern. They don't test it, they don't do new pictures, all the pictures are still the AI pictures and they're not crediting the Fiverr artist at all. So the Fiverr artist is getting paid literally like five or $10 to make a pattern that this person's selling for $6 a pop. He's selling like hundreds of these patterns on Etsy because people don't know the difference between an AI art and real crochet. And so all these newbie crocheters are coming into Etsy, they're buying this pattern and they're getting disappointed and then they're quitting, they're not crocheting anymore because they see they got scammed basically. Um, so that's been the frustrating thing is like all of us have been like, hey, stop doing that, obviously. But, you know, there's only so much you can do because uh, Etsy wants to make money and they're making money, even though it's bad money. Um, so, yeah, we're trying to fix it. We're trying to figure it out. But, you know, there's only there's really only so much you can do, which is probably the most frustrating part about it. Um, yeah, I hope they get taken down too. We've reported them a bunch to Etsy. I just don't think Etsy really uh, cares yet. So we'll see. Um, yeah, and, and that's the other thing, Katrina, is he's been paying for fake reviews on his own, on the on his Etsy so that he doesn't it doesn't look as bad. But then once you find like a real review, it's like one star, one star, one star, five stars. This pattern was great. So easy to understand, you know? And it's like, okay, well. Those are obviously not real. Um, anyhow, sorry. Sorry, I'm getting deep into uh, something that rubbed me the wrong way this week, and it's uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. This, this live stream is supposed to be about uh, about fun and hanging out and crocheting, so let's, let's just do that today. Okay, so... You can see how the start of this bone is. Can you see what it kind of, what I used to, to make it, by the way? Can you see the the inspiration pattern? Here, I'll pull one out. Look at that. Does it look like any, anything? That's right. It is a miniature heart. It's the top of the miniature heart. That's how I started this. And then uh, after that, uh, when we get to the other side, I show how to make it the other way around. What kind of things should we vote on today, by the way, for this um, this uh, 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 hold on, I can think of the word this uh, turkey leg. What what should we vote on? What should we make? Like, how should we customize it? Is what I mean. Do I mean obviously we should probably customize like the mouth and like face a little bit. But any other ideas on how to customize it? Oh, speaking of, while you guys are coming up with customization options, um, Lachlan, hello, Lachlan, how are you? Oh, here we go. Okay, Cassandro is on it. He says, "What if we make the turkey leg a veteran for Veterans Day?" Do you? I do worry a little bit that it won't. That that that'll be the opposite of what we're going for but we could try that we could try that that's a that's a thought zoe says we should have a mashed potatoes hat also a really great thought um i do like the mashed potato hat Uh, oh, Katrina, so I, my suggestion, by the way, when it comes to Etsy, is uh, throw, do more, like put more patterns up there if you can. Um, every time you put a new pattern up there, it gets like, boot, like all the rest of your patterns get just a little bit of a boost. 
um, f in the algorithm to go higher up in their search results. Um, so there's there's one thing. I also have been thinking about putting them like thinking about other options for where to sell patterns. Uh, I know Ravelry. I, I do sell some patterns on Ravelry. Um, I actually just put a poll out on. Uh, there's a fly in the box. You will die. You will die today. <laughs> you probably will. I don't even need to squish them. Isn't that funny to think about how flies live for such short lifespans? It's just such an interesting, like, wow. Um, ooh, a pilgrim hat is fun, too. Okay, so... Okay. We got army hat, pilgrim hat, mashed potato hat. We're getting somewhere, guys. We're getting somewhere. We're getting options here. And I like them. Some teeth snagged in it. Oh, like it's currently being bit. Ooh, Javiera. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here's... Okay. Here's our choices, guys. Yeah, we could do a bite out of it. You know what would be kind of funny? We would have to ruin it, but we could just like straight up cut a hole in the top of it like it's been bitten out of. It would ruin, technically ruin the crochet, but it would be kind of funny. I don't know. Another thought. Another thought. Naughty Flowers uses Ravelry quite a, quite a bit. Does anybody use Ribbler? I know like someone suggested Ribbler, like I should put my patterns on Ribbler, but I don't know how like useful Ribbler actually is. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not really sure. Um, yeah. What else did I, what was I, what else was I gonna say? I was gonna tell you guys something, but I can't remember what it was. Or I wanted to ask your opinion on something. I can't remember. Man, Land Before Twine is like such a good, like Zoe, I should just, I should just pay Zoe to come up with all the names for everything. Such a creative mind. Zoe, big credit to you. You have such a great brain. I hope, I hope you use your brain for good. <laughs> oh, a maze feed. That's funny. Add a little brain on the inside so that when they when we cut it out, they're like it shows a little brain through. That would be that'd be nasty. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, uh, Krishandra has a Ribbler shop. Do you get many sales from your Ribbler shop, Krishandra? I'm curious. A turkey tail and a gobbler to break people's brains. Oh, Hill Simp. That's a fun idea. Okay. Okay, I like where you're going with that. That's a really fun idea. Okay, so then let's let's write these down before I forget it. Um, with our names, so I'll put the I'll put the names of the kits right here. Um, by the way, the kits that are coming after the dinosaur one, after season six, so season seven and eight, I do have ideas in mind for those, um, but they're not solidified, so I don't really want to share them just yet. I want to really make sure they're solid before we go. Okay, so our ideas so far for how to customize this turkey leg is um, pilgrim hat, pilgrim hat, mashed potato hat, which I think is really funny, mashed po potato hat, um, uh, army hat, uh, bite out of it. Uh, and then the last one that someone just said uh, was the turkey, uh, uh, turkey face. Turkey face and tail to break people's brains. Uh, that's a fun idea. That's a fun idea. 
Unfin, thank you so much for joining. Make sure to give this video a like on your way out, uh, but thank you so much for joining. I hope you get a chance to come back if you do get a chance. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hey, by the way, next week, uh, next Thursday is Club Crochet's birthday. We're doing a big birthday celebration. I wanted to do it on Friday, but I'm preparing for something, and Thursday is kind of the day anyhow. So I was like, well, whatever. We'll do a big Thursday bash, and it'll be all about the birthday. So we're going to do a big birthday celebration on thir next Thursday. Um, I believe that's the 16th of November, I think. Yeah, 16th of, of November. Um, oh, yeah, definitely gravy oozing over the top for the mashed potato hat. Yeah, that's definitely it. Um, uh, but yeah, we're gonna do a big birthday celebration uh, and I don't really know what we'll do just yet. Maybe it'll be like a big vote, like you vote on what kind of pattern to make or, or something. Or maybe we'll design a pattern live. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Any ideas? Any ideas on what to do for our birthday? Let's uh, let's find out. Let's find out. Yarn Works by Lydia. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining. Um. Okay, we got four. I need to get um. Two more rounds here for the leg, or for the bone, and then we can make like the top of the bone. But we're actually coming close to the end of the bone part. And then we'll have to do our vote after that uh, as I get started on the the turkey, the, the meat of the turkey. Uh, what time? I, I'm thinking 1. Yeah, same time, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, birthday bonanza. Um, it's Avocado is writing a bunch of... Uh, of kanji of, or, or Chinese I think this is all Chinese because uh, if it were Japanese there would be a little bit of hiragana in it and there's not the amaze feed is flying they're beating us they're way quicker at crocheting oh no okay so we got the bone like started here we need to stuff it just a little bit and then we'll um actually you know let's just move on to the next part i'll stuff it in a little second hey well whatever let's stuff it just slightly i know i'm back and forth flip flop flip flop um with the gobbler in mind <laughs> you're thinking of an actual club a club, a crochet club. That's funny. Can I dress up Jimbo for the birthday? Unless he hates hat or that. He does not like being dressed up, but I can try. I can try give him a little outfit, a little suit, a little suit and tie. I'll do my best. And Tina's birthday is next week on Wednesday. Happy early birthday, Tina. Oh my God. I, I would love to try to dress up Jimbo. I don't think it's going to go well, but it might be worth a shot. One, two, and then increase, right? Yeah. Yes. Boom. Okay. I'll keep going around. See, so you kind of see how this pattern works up. It, like, you start to make it bigger here, and then we're going to split it in half to make the top part of the bone. Um, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I, I can't remember what I was gonna say. One, two, and then increase right here. What time zone are we in? I am in the Pacific Standard Time Zone. Uh, I am in Los Angeles, or close to Los Angeles, Ventura County specifically. Chisai, you you know this one. Chisai is for small. Yep, that is the. I think I think I'm saying that right. Chisai, anybody know Japanese in the chat and can tell me if that is how I say 
small in Japanese? I'm pretty sure it is. Three. Six, seven, and then an increase. Nine. Okay. Yeah, I'm in California. Tag, or sorry, Tig. Hello, Tig. See, look, I remembered. I actually saw something the other day that was like some a Scottish person like saying a bunch of different names and uh, and they said Tig, Tig, and and it was spelled like that, and I was like. That's how it is. She's Scottish. Right? You're Scottish? I think you're Scottish. I think that's that where that name comes from. But I don't know. Let me know, Ty. Okay, I think that was it. Nine. Okay. I think we're I think we're doing alright. We have one more round of just single crochets. Let's go ahead and start marking off where we're at in the pattern. Yeah, it's coming along pretty quick already, yeah. Not not bad, which is great because I wanna have some extra time for uh, customizing it. Or maybe even making like a little turkey leg. That could be kind of fun too. Seth wants to make their own crochet YouTube channel. You totally should, Seth. You absolutely should give that a shot. Um, I can give you some advice. Uh, First advice, uh, actually, this is the big advice that I tell. I, I was just talking to Drew last, uh, or actually, I, I guess a few weeks ago, about um, advice for recording crochet, because they were like, do you have any tips? Here's my big tip. If you want to start a crocheting channel and you want to start recording like videos about you crocheting, my big advice is, A, you can use your phone. I, I use my phone for like almost all of my patterns. I, it's just an iPhone. Like the phone camera, when it's this close, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can use a fancy camera, like I'm using a fancy camera right now for the live streams, but usually I just use my phone camera when I'm doing my patterns. The second big advice, uh, and this one actually is, in my opinion, way bigger than that first advice. It's that if you set up your camera for recording, um, you wanna make sure you have full range of motion of your hands. So try to get a tripod set up so that it like bends over your hands. You know, like there's like a, like a, there, there's there's a, a stuff online for you to buy that you can buy that, that are like tripod stands that like make a bar that goes over that the camera can just like sit on. Um, what I use though, which is way easier and actually I think way cheaper is I just use a mic stand. I use a mic stand and I just screwed my uh, my tripod, like my phone adapter thing, to the end of the uh, to the end of the mic stand, and that way I can make the mic stand go wherever I want it to. Yeah, that's that's my biggest advice. That actually took me a long time to figure out. Um, if you have been a fan of these live streams for a long time, you'll know that when uh, like like when we started doing the live streams, I used to actually have a tripod right here. And I would have to reach around it, and I've, I'd have to crochet like, like this, around a tripod, and like just like tilt my head around it. It was very difficult. Um, yeah. So that's my th those are my big advice. Uh, I hope that that helps you out, Seth, if you are really interested in getting a YouTube channel. Um, and then you know what? I'll give you one more tip uh, because three is a good number to give. Um, third tip. Uh, is if you really want to start a, uh, start a YouTube channel, it's going to take forever to get subscribers. That's just the fact of the matter. I mean, maybe you're going to get really lucky and that won't be the case, but most likely it's going to take a long time. So don't expect a lot of viewers. Don't expect a lot of people watching the videos, but just keep going as if they were there. That's like, keep on trucking, keep on keeping on. Um, that's the hardest part about creating a YouTube channel is consistency and uh, stamina. That is the most difficult part in my opinion, is continuously creating content even though no one is watching it. It's hard. It's really, really hard. Uh, it's, but you get better every single time and eventually one of those videos will do good and then all the rest of them will get a little bit of 
love from that and you're gonna learn as you go so those are my biggest tips if you really want to get started um ooh, another question about it crochet for beginners asks what are my tips for earning revenue okay here's my tip for earning revenue uh, as far as like YouTube goes if you want to earn revenue via YouTube do not count on ads period don't count on them you're you're gonna be better off if you don't um, because ad revenue is nice but it is inconsistent and could go away like that um, there was the ad apocalypse that happened uh, you could accidentally say something in a video you could put music in the behind it anything could happen and then suddenly boom you're not getting ads on that video anymore so try to design your business uh, first off think of it like a business a little bit and try to design it so that ad revenue is auxiliary auxiliary I think that's the right word to your way that you're making money that's not the main way you're gonna be making money um, because it's just gonna make you better at it in general and and counting on ads is just it's not it's it it it's not a long-term solution let's go with that um yeah so there's my tip there uh, as far as actually making revenue though make patterns sell patterns for every free pattern that you make make a sell sold pattern oh my gosh we got Phoebe hold on I gotta switch cameras do we see her no she's not going to the camera I'm thinking about it hold on I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys Phoebe real quick We tried. We tried. We got we got her for like half of a second. Just a quick little Phoebe. Um. Yeah. So uh, sell patterns, and every time you come out with a free video, uh, always have it connected to a for sale something for sale. That's a good system for making revenue. Um. Uh, what's another one? One, two. We skip nine. Sorry, this part of the pattern is a little tricky. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, skip nine? Wait. Sorry, just one second. I hear someone outside, and there shouldn't be. Uh, I'll be right back. Check, check the cat cam real quick. Okay, we're good. We're good. It's just it's just a package. Um, but it scared me, you know. One, two, three, four, chain three, skip nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, sell your crochet. That's another good tip, actually. Um, I feel like I'm off count here. One, two. I guess not. It just feels weird to me. Like it feels like we're off count. Do, do, do 18 1 2 3 4 all right well whatever 1 2 3 nine. skip 9 doom right there and then 5 like that doesn't that look like actually actually no maybe that that is fine that is fine i'm just being picky okay i need to believe in myself um 1 2 Three and five. Okay, so what other good ways to make revenue? Sell patterns. Uh, sell sell your finished projects. Um, that was how I started. I don't really sell my finished projects anymore. I was actually just talking to Jules yesterday about it. Actually, you know what? Let's do a vote real quick. 
I, I got a question for you. Um, what I want to know is, uh, start a poll. If I sold, how about this? Should I sell my? So there's my question real quick. Real quick question for you. Should I sell my finished crocheted projects again? Um, I do have like a decent amount and I've been thinking it'd be kind of nice to start selling some of them every now and then. Um, my thought process right now is because I'm not, I don't really want to sell them that bad. Uh, I want, because I like them so much, I maybe would sell them in like little spurts. Uh, and then when I do that, it would be for auction. So like I would auction off certain things during a live stream. That's what I was kind of thinking. Like it'd be kind of fun to do like an auction during a live stream so that people could either like, you know, pay what the whole crew is deciding. And it'll be like a nice little fun thing like in the corner. That's my kind of thought, but I don't know. I, I kind of also don't want to sell them. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'd love your, I'd love your advice there. Um, yeah, uh, t -t 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 am I bilingual? Uh, not, I would say no, I'm not bilingual. I do know a few different languages. Um, I know, uh, un peu de français. I don't even know if I said that right. I think I know a little bit of French. Um, and I know a little tiny bit of Japanese. I've been studying Japanese. I studied it for four years in high school. And then I've been studying it now for two years uh, on Duolingo. And I were going to Japan in, uh, um, we're going to Japan at the end of the year. So I really wanna practice it more to get ready for that. The next language I really wanna learn, probably after the Japanese, uh, the trip to Japan is, um, uh, I want to try learning either uh, Spanish or Portuguese. Um, I want to try that. I really, really like uh, Spanish and actually it would be useful in my everyday life because I live in California and there's a lot of people that speak Spanish in California. So yeah, I've been considering doing Spanish next, uh, but I really do like trying to learn Japanese. I really like learning languages in general. It's, it's one of the, the things that I love doing. So um, yeah, I'd like to get better at it. Um, okay, one more round here, and then we can uh, do the other side of the pattern. Um, in round eight of the mystery pattern, oh yes, okay, so in round eight, um, Twiz, the reason it says that is because, um, oh yeah, Tyg. Definitely. Give me, give me any ideas you have for the name of the dinosaur kit or the space kit. Like I'm, I'm taking suggestions. Absolutely. Um, uh, the, what was I just saying? <laughs> uh, in, in the mystery pattern, in the new preview pattern that is out, um, the feedback or the reason why it says that there are eight stitches when there's only three was because last time I did a pattern like this, I got a lot of feedback saying that they were confused because the stitch count said, you know, three because that's all the pattern, that's all the stitches you make, but really there's eight stitches around because you stop early. So, um, it's like the, I think it's like it, you make three stitches, but there's still eight stitches around. Um, does that help? Let me know. Uh, is there a way I should say that in the pattern, do you think? Um, uh, do you think Twiz, do you think there's a better way I should say that? Uh, and is that what you're talking about? I'm not sure. <laughs> Give you grief today because you work at a French bakery, but you don't speak French. Sorry, bud, I'm Australian. Yeah, like, like, what do you want me to do about it? You should just start pretending to, to do a French, to, to speak French and be like, Oh, I'm sorry. Or just pretend to speak a completely different language. 
Yes, crochet beginners. Uh, yes, that is the dealio. Uh, SAG is, uh, the strike is over apparently. Um, but yeah, I don't know what the terms are. Uh, I don't think anybody knows what the terms are. I mean, I'm not a SAG actor, so, you know, I don't really have a, have a, uh, a dog in the race. But, or horse in the race? Whatever. Um, but, uh, oh, Slay Crochet changed their names to, I love to crochet. Um, but, I, apparently a bunch of new, uh, a bunch of, like, stuff started uh, productions restarted so that's really exciting because um, now we get to actually you know start seeing movies again or, or like you know they'll start making more um, by the way did anybody see the trailer for the, the the new avatar show on Netflix because it looks dope it looks like way dope I'm like super into it <laughs> did anybody else see that it just came out yesterday and I haven't heard anybody um, anybody talking about it which is crazy to me because it's like it has like three million views already probably even more and, and i haven't seen one article or anything about it i was like what why is no one talking about the avatar trailer for the live action avatar that actually looks dope anyhow y'all should check it out it looks really cool i'm very very excited uh Pale Yarntology. Oh, that's a that's an interesting one. Ty, Ty that's an interesting. P Pale Yarntology. It's hard to say, but it's not. It. I get where you're going with it. It's not a bad thought. Yeah, I definitely get where you're going with it. Cause I was thinking originally of like, um, back to the prehistoric or prehistoric picos or or i couldn't think of a word that was like yarn related that um started with p you know so i couldn't really think of where prehistoric would work in there and i do kind of want to use like jurassic but the at the other time that i want to use those kind of like like jurassic or or um uh, Cretaceous or something like that. The patterns aren't all from there, you know. Like the dinosaurs, some are from the pa uh, from from the Jurassic, from or, some are from the Cretaceous period. Like they're, they're going to be from different periods of time of like prehistoric time. So I don't really want to stick to one for the fear that someone comes and goes like this. Like the Triceratops wasn't from the from the Jurassic period, and I'm like, man, I don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, so now I'm on, so I did pull up a new loop in each chain. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Cool. So now we go over to the chains. And we go 10 right here. Then, and then, you know, before I do the next round after this, I should stuff it just a little bit better just to get prepared. So let me do this first stitch in round um, 19, or sorry, 20, and then I'm gonna stuff it just a little bit. Should we add a face to the bone? What do you guys think? Do you think we should add a face to the bone, even though it's gonna be on the inside of the turkey leg? That's true, Zoe. Jurassic Park franchise has been getting away with that for a long time, uh, with using the wrong, like the wrong era. <laughs> You're totally right. You're totally right. Um, yeah, okay, so what do we think? Do we add a face to the bone, even though it's gonna be on the inside of the turkey leg? Rudezilla says yes, and you know, I'm kind of inclined to agree. You know, the great part about what we do on Club Crochet is we go the extra mile even though we don't have to. And that's what I love about all of y'all. Let's see, where do we have eyes though? There. 
So we'll use little, I'll use little eyes for this. But I think, I think we go the extra mile, even though we don't need to, because why not? Because why not? What's the worst that happens? We have a cute face on the inside of a, of the, our face, of our body? Like, ooh, bummer. <laughs> All right, let, I'm actually going to start by adding the, um, the mouth, and then I'll work around the mouth. I'll add the eyes around the mouth, rather. Mrs. B's Crafting Life. Thanks for commenting to both you and Rudzilla. I appreciate it because you guys don't comment too often and I totally understand. No, oops, no worries at all. You don't have to comment if you're watching this and you're, you just enjoy watching and you don't want to really be a commenter. I totally get it. I also watch live streams and I don't comment a lot. Um, so I get it. But uh, thank you for saying hi and commenting still. I appreciate your um, participation. But again, if you don't want to participate, like if you don't want to participate in the com comments, I, I get it. I definitely get it. So I think we'll just do a simple little cute smile because this is last second and I don't really want to put in a whole bunch of effort into it. So we're just going to do a very simple smile because it's going to be covered up anyhow and only will know that this is on the inside. just for us and so is this bone part too by the way like this part of the bone you're not gonna see it I'm putting a lot of extra effort into making two ends of this bone but it's on the inside you know it's just for us throw that to the side okay so there's a very easy simple smile we'll add some t eyes on either end one and to like that perfect you know because the the rest of the leg is going to go over that face anyhow um can you take the bone out of the turkey the kershandro the answer is yes technically it's very hard to put it back in though um uh i i have taken a bone like taking the meat off of the bone and then put it back on to the bone once but it is very difficult not only is it difficult to get it off but it's also difficult to get it it's even more difficult to get it back on um so here i'll actually show you uh i believe this one is the one where i took it out so i took it out i pulled really hard and it finally got out like i'm not gonna do it because i don't want to risk it um but it can come out how you get it back in is you put yarn on the end of the bone and then you put it through the bottom here and you pull it like that and it pops back in. Um, it's very hard though. Honestly, it was like so much effort that I, in the video tutorial for this pattern, I was like, don't take the bone out. I mean, you can, but don't. <laughs> it's too difficult to get back in. Um, absolutely, I do twiz. Yes, please send me a picture of your finished uh, mystery mini gurumi. Uh, I, I would love that actually. Could you send it? Um, how, how are you going to send it to me? Um, you can either send it as a direct message on Instagram. You can put it onto the, uh, the discord channel. Um, or you can email me directly. I'm Louie at club crochet.com. You can email me a picture. Um, any of those would work really great. Um, okay. Let's, let me, let me do finish this bone up real quick. I need to like do a little bit of focusing. So we got nine there. Okay, so we need nine. Okay, so one, two, I see. Three, four. Seven, there we go. Eight and then nine, got it. Eight and then nine, like that. And then we'll, this will decrease a bunch for our last round. Okay, let's also end the vote real quick. Okay, so not a lot of people think that we should be um, auctioning it, which is totally fine. That's exactly the kind of feedback I was looking for. 
Oh, crochet for beginners. I was thinking about doing a ham yesterday. Yeah, um, I, I have been thinking about changing this pattern and doing like a ham edition instead. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to put an effort there. I do have a lot of things going on right now, but I do think that would be a pretty relatively easy um, addition to the pattern. Or, you know, like alteration or whatever. You stopped using Discord because you couldn't find anyone to chat with. Oh, interesting. In our Discord channel? In the Club Crochet one? Or just Discord in general? You let me know. You let me know. Okay. Got a couple more here. Um, I am, by the way, very, very excited for that Avatar trailer. Um, I thought it looked really cool. Uh, and a bunch of unknown actors. Like, how fun is that? How often do you see uh, shows now and just things in general using actors that you have never seen before? Like, it's pretty rare nowadays. So, it's I, I don't know. I was really excited to be like, ooh, I don't know who any of these people are. How exciting. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I knew who um, the Fire Lord was. Like the actor for, that's playing the Fire Lord. But other than that, I didn't know any of them. Alright, we're going to stuff this up. And we're going to sew these two ends closed. And then we'll be done with the bone part. And we'll start moving on to the Parkamite. And then we'll customize it. We'll we'll vote on hats and stuff. Um, actually, any other suggestions? It's now or never. I'll give you like like uh, maybe like less than five more minutes to uh, give me name or suggestions for the kinds of hats or customizations you want me to do to the um, to the main turkey leg. And I'll choose my four favorite. I've got five so far, and uh, I'll choose my four favorite, and we'll do a vote on that for how, how we should customize our turkey leg uh, after we uh, are done with our bone here. We're looking for hat ideas, um, stuff like that. Um, actually, no, uh, I very rarely get fan mail. I get fan emails every now and then, but very, very rarely do I get fan mail. I do have a fan mail uh, PO box though, if you wanna send me some fan mail. Um, I believe it's, I believe it's P.O. Box number 1555, Thousand Oaks, California. Um, you know what? I don't know what it is off the top of my head. And finding that right now is going to be too difficult. But I do have a P.O. Box that you can send fan mail to if you want to send me crochet stuff or just a letter or, you know, whatever. That would be really cool. I've never gotten... I, I, I haven't gotten fan mail in many, many years. I got it before the pandemic. People would send me some crocheted stuff, um, which was way, way cool. I've got a really cool... Um, oh, it's on it's on one of the walls around here. It, I've got a really cool uh, cross-stitching uh, that says Louis Loops that someone made me. Um, but for the most part, I have not really gotten any fan mail. Uh, and everything that anybody's ever sent me, I've put up on the walls. So, definitely will will accept it. Mashed potatoes and gravy hat. Love it. Oh, cool. You sent it to the, to the Instagram. Awesome. I will check that in just a moment. Actually, I can't check it. I got to uh, use my phone to check it. My phone is being occupied staring at a very cute asleep cat look at that bone top one number two coming at you discord can be overwhelming yeah i i agree with that discord can be really overwhelming Whoa, the Amaze feed it just finished. You just finished the whole turkey leg, dude? What? No, you didn't. You gotta make two then. You gotta make two drumsticks, you know? That's actually crazy, dude. You are very, very fast at crocheting. You should. You should sell them. 
See, that's my problem with selling this stuff is I feel like I'm not quick enough to sell my patterns. And then I'm also not like, I don't want to make the same thing over and over again, which is why I don't usually sell my finished work. It's because it's like, oh, cool. I have a copy of this. I don't want to sell it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, double knot this. One. I have a hard time letting go is basically what I'm saying. But also, I need money. Jules and I are, we're, we, you know, we're planning on getting married. We want to find a home. It's expensive AF in uh, California. And I don't really pay myself well. I like to pay other people. Okay. Look at that. That's adorable. That's so cute. That is so freaking cute. I'm so proud of that. Okay, great. Let's continue on to the turkey meat. Uh, and let's see, was there any other suggestions? Turkey, maybe mashed potatoes with gravy hat. Yep, for sure. Okay. All right, I think we got our votes then. Let's show my face on Discord. Okay, so we're going to do a vote on how should we customize our turkey leg. Um, mashed potato and gravy hat. Um, what were the other ones? Uh, Pilgrim. Hi, Jiminy. Jiminy is awake. And I like the fire. Okay. Hey, bud. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We've got an awake and alive and a very talkative kitten on our hands. Yeah, that's right, you're just a kitten. You're not a cat, you're a kitten. Do you wanna say hi to the chat? Okay, Jimbo wants to say hi to the chat, one sec. Come here. Oh yeah, come here. Oh. Say hi. Look at them little cute little toe beans. They're so cute. Look at your big fuzzy belly. You got so much fur on your belly. Say hi. No, now you don't want to talk because you're being held. That's all he ever wants. That's why he meows. Because he just wants to be held like a little tiny baby. You're just a fuzzy baby. You are a fuzzy human baby. You're not a cat. You're just a fuzzy human baby. Oh my gosh. You're too much, dude. I can't crochet like this. You know that, right? I've tried. Don't get me wrong, I've tried. Mm -hmm. What? Let's put you back in your bed. Back to the cat cam, back to the cat cam. He's the perfect size for the cat bed. Okay. Turkey leg coming at you. Yep, exactly, Valkyrie Kitty. It, I just don't like to make the same thing over and over, and I, I'd rather, like, customize, spend a long time and, like, take my time on a crochet and then customize it. Oh man, he's back awake. Hi Jimbo. Yes, that's my leg. Don't jump on me, please. Ooh, first booth in December. Congratulations, Naughty Flowers. That's very exciting. That's extremely exciting. I hope, I, I wish you the best. Uh, one, two, three. I got cat hair in my mouth now. Uh, 
Um, I also, Crochet for Beginners, uh, have a very hard time with my attention span, uh, but I don't have PTSD trauma. Uh, I'm sorry that you do. Um, I just have millennial TikTok brain. <laughs> that's my that's my trauma. <laughs> wow, really traumatic. <laughs> I'm sorry that you have PTSD. By the way, I'm not trying to make fun of that at all. That that is rough. Uh, but I also have a very bad attention span for no good reason. Basically, is what I'm saying. Three, four. Okay, cool. We are on our turkey leg mates and we just got a lot of just you know what i actually really like this part of the pattern because it's way more chill you don't need to think too hard too hard like about it you want to cuddle with jimbo he would love to cuddle with you valkyrie i'm sure he is a very um loving kitty i've never seen him upset or not like anybody he'll run up to anybody that will have him and just rub his entire body all over them. Maybe bite their face a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bite in the face. That's Jimbo for you. What is the hardest thing? Ooh, good question. The hardest thing that I've ever crocheted. Hmm. What is the hardest thing that I've ever crocheted? Hmm. It might be Jack, probably Jack Gurgle, my, the, the goblin puppet. He's coming out now. I'm not going to do the voice, but I'll show you Jack Gurgle. This is Jack Gurgle. This might, might have been one of the hardest things that I had to crochet only because like it just had a lot of parts. Like I had to figure out how to do mouth and stuff. It wasn't really that hard though, actually. Hmm. What was harder than Jack to make? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. The reason I think Jack is because he it's it's bigger than most of my projects. I think when I think about difficulty with crochet, it's less like the difficulty of actually doing it and more just like how long it's going to take to make. But that's not really difficulty, like, you know. So, I don't know. I don't know. That's a really good question. I'm gonna think that. I'm gonna think about that, Tig, and uh, I'll get back to you there. What's the easiest thing that I've crocheted? Probably the starter kit, like uh, the patterns that I did for the starter kit, um, like like this. This thing is like crazy easy to make. You know. Um. Yeah, that might be the easiest one. Or, or, you know, one of my other complete beginner patterns, like the little whales or stuff like that. Like, those ones are really easy. <laughs> Hopefully that answers your question, Oliver. I love your name, by the way. Big fan of the name Oliver. I think it's a very, very nice name. Three, four, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're good. We are crocheting that. Jack is really cool. Um, yeah, I told Jules that uh, one of the seasons after uh, in next year's kits, I kind of want to do puppets. Um, and she was like, Ooh, you sure you want to do puppets? And I was like, yeah, I think I want to do puppets. She's like, maybe you should ask your audience if you should do puppets. I was like, I think they're going to really like puppets, but okay, I'll ask. Um, but yeah, I, I think puppets would be a pretty fun one to do. Uh, I've also been thinking of doing um, a uh, like either doing like bobbleheads or pod people, like so like mini mini people and stuff. That'd be kind of fun. Um, like design your own person. Um, yeah. There we go. I 
hear a demon. I hear a little, little furry demon coming right behind my legs to bite me in the butt. Um, can I add more of my patterns to Ravelry? Oh, yeah, totally. I'm sorry. I haven't been really focusing as much on posting them to Ravelry, um, but I really should. Yeah, I'll, I'll start to ask, um, or I'll start to put them on, on Ravelry for you. One, two, three, and an increase. Okay, cool. Uh... Uh, Zoe says that Puppet Maker is their dream job. Oh my god, same Zoe. Same. Hey. Yeah, Jimbo's like, me. Right? A puppet season would be really fun. Can I make a crocheted doll head of yourself? Yeah, definitely. I've done a few uh, little versions of myself in the past, um, but I would... Yes, I know you are, Cat. Uh, but I do, I do want to do like a a better one. I I'd like to do an actual puppet version of myself too. Would be pretty fun. Um, is there a pattern for Jack? See, that's the thing. There's not yet. Um, even though I made them, I never wrote it out as a pattern because I I don't know why. Because I don't know why. Because of no good reason, Jimbo. No. No, this is bad, you guys. He's in the... He's behind the light box. I can't get him out of there. Hey, you need to come out. Yeah, you do. You got to come out of there. I can't have you back there, bud. You could unplug things. It's just not a good spot to be in, bud. He's literally laying... Oh, my God. He squeezed into like the tiniest hole to get behind the light box. I can't help you out of there, bud. You gotta figure your own way out. Don't freak out though, because if you freak out, you could unplug the live stream. One, two. Increase there. Wiggle the yarn to entice him. They want me to try to entice you with yarn. Oh, he's coming out. He's coming out. I didn't even need to entice him. Can you get out? Don't, don't press the power button. Okay, good. We good? We still live? We're still live. Yeah, we're still live. No thanks to you. Oh. Bud. You gotta, you gotta be, behave. Behave. Oh, behave. Okay. Well, we only have 21 votes so far on how to customize our turkey leg, by the way. So if you want to put in your opinions, uh, vote now. It's in the chat. Should be uh, linked at the top of the chat. Should be linked at the top of the chart. And I think we're gonna do, um, it looks like we're gonna do a mashed potato and gravy hat so far, unless the votes come in and change the minds. Hello, new person in the chat who is typing in, I believe, Russian? Uh, I don't know what they're saying. So hopefully they're not saying anything terrible. But I'm gonna guess if they know about this channel, it's probably very nice and very sweet because everybody in the chat is usually very nice and very sweet. Russian alphabet is crazy though. It looks like, like, um, like, like Greek or something, you know? I think this is the song from Picross. I've been playing a lot of Picross recently. It's such a good game to play, like, 
first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Get your brain moving in the morning and it also makes me sleepy. It does, does best of both worlds. Okay, I think we're on... Okay, so now... Hi, K-Blends. Uh, we are on round... Oh, no, I still do need to increase. Okay, sorry. I thought I was on the part where I just need to crochet for three rounds. But no, I got one more round first. Okie dokie, artichokey. You know what's really frustrating is I put an eight on this bottle of eyes, but then I added a bunch of 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter eyes in it. So now I just need to like guess which one the eight millimeter eyes are based on look. I mean, I can tell the difference, but also it can be really difficult. And one time I was recording a video tutorial and uh, used this bottle and I used one eye. It was it was the video tutorial for the um, the uh, sunflower. I used one eye that was ten or twelve millimeters, and one eye that was eight millimeters, I think. And I didn't realize until the very end of the live or to the video tutorial. In the video, I'm like, oh my god, I did two different eyes, and it was it was really funny actually. So if you look really closely in that video tutorial, you'll notice that it's like. Because it, because I used two different eyes. Oh, thank you so much. You're writing using a translator. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if I could say thank you in Russian, I would. I do not. I'm assuming you're speaking Russian, but I'm not really sure. Um, dude, Valkyrie, that's so funny you say that. Someone just suggested that to me the other day, and I was like, what? That's a thing. Uh, 3D Picross on the DS, I've heard, is very, very cool from many different people now. Uh, I do definitely want to play it, but at this point, it's like, how do I even get that? Um, I guess I do have a DS somewhere. Where is my DS? Oh, you know what? It's in my... I, I know where it is. Yeah, maybe I can find it for, like, relatively cheap online since it's been so long since that game's been out. I don't know. I'll look into it though. That's a that's a good suggestion, and and you're not the first one to give me that suggestion too. Which means that is definitely something I would want to do. Okay, so I was talking earlier about um, Lava Run, my board game. Uh, where you control a bunch of dinosaurs and try to escape a volcano. Um, I'm going to be starting a new, another wave of playtesting uh, probably within a week or two. Um, I designed a new way to play the game where you can play it by yourself. It's like a single player version of, um, of Lava Run. So I'm going to be running the playtest for that pretty soon. I'll probably let you guys know in the chat. Um, or in the live stream next week if we do uh, if if it's ready by then um, Yeah, but there's you know, I need to really make sure that the game is solid before I launch the Kickstarter in July So July 1st will be the Kickstarter. So this is the ultra early. Hey heads up There's a Kickstarter going live uh, in July, so Yeah and I'm saying it out loud so that it actually happens. But I got a lot of work to do there, and one of them is to play test the single player version of the game a lot more. Um, so I will be working on that probably maybe this weekend while I'm uh, while Jules is in improv class. Oh, dude, Cooper, thank you so much, Cooper. You are so on it, dude. Do you just have like a document of all the links so that if I mention anything, you just like are boom, it's in the chat. I don't know. Cooper is always on it though. But yeah, if you want to play test my game uh, and give me feedback on it, uh, I will be sending out a new suggestion to all the, there's a thing in the chat right now, a link in the chat there. So if you want to give, uh, try out the game that I've been keep, that I keep mentioning and give me feedback on it, uh, you can join an email list so you'll get notified about it. Okay. 
Is this crochet or gaming? I thought you said to not mix topics. It's it's both actually. <laughs> it actually is both. So the the game itself can be played without crochet, but you can actually crochet the pieces in order to play the game with. So uh, yeah, I'm, I kind of try to design games to encourage the uh, uh, encourage creativity is like the point of these games. Like it's something to do with your crochet when you're done crocheting. Um, is the idea there so it kind of is mixing topics a little bit but they also stand on their own you know like you cr crochet these dinosaur little dinosaurs uh, just for fun um, or you crochet the dinosaurs and play this game or you can play the game just for fun you don't need to crochet for them but you can crochet for them uh, so yeah it's like a little bit of a mix of both Yeah, it's gonna be like a board game and crochet kit simultaneously. You can choose which one you wanna get. Um, I wanna make a version of the board game that has like a, a fold out or like a rollout mat so that you can crochet a volcano and then put the game in the volcano or something. I don't know, I've got a lot of ideas. I got a lot of ideas. Um. How did I start crocheting? Good question, Le uh, Leany. I like your name, Leany. I don't think I've ever heard the name Leany before. That's really fun. Leany D. You you have like an author's name. Leany D. You could be like a children's book author or something. Leany D. Very sweet name. Um. Anyhow, sorry. Uh, uh, how did I start crocheting? I started in high school, which was... A long time ago uh you can guess how old i am if you'd like to uh i won't be offended unless you say the wrong number uh <laughs> um a long time ago in a galaxy far far away i started crocheting in high school um to uh just because i got really crafty uh there was a girl i had a crush on so i would make her a bunch of things i started crocheting her a bunch of things um we started dating it was a terrible relationship but i got crochet out of it uh soon after i started crocheting um i learned like the basics online i think i learned how to do the single crochet i think that was really it i learned how to do like a like a flat single crochet thing and then i just started making things up uh and then as i made things up i realized that i could just do patterns and tutorials for this but if i made a pattern for it because i didn't know the um, like I made up stitches for it. I needed to do a video tutorial to explain the pattern better uh, and hence where YouTube started. Yeah. Wow. Cro crochet for beginners. Wrong answer. But I, you know what? That's okay. 38? Wow. Yeah, no, I'm not 38. I'm not 38. You think I'm 38 years old? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> 38. All right, I'll take it. Sure, I'm 38. No, I'm not. Jules, I can hear Jules laughing at that in the background. 27 to 30, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Guess my age. Ooh, I don't play that game. <laughs> Hi. Someone said I'm 22. That that's oh, that's more like it. You wish. Yeah, I'm 22. You wish. I'm 22. Can I give a hint? Sure. We met when you were 26. 24. 24. Oh my god, really? Yeah. <laughs> we met when I was 24. So I was 25. I was about to turn 26. Mm -hmm. You were about to turn 25. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I just yeah. turned. 24. You Wait, were about no. to turn 25. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I can't do math, and that hint was probably not helpful. Also, hi, I'm Jules, for those who don't know. Oh, yeah, this is my fiance, Jules. Hi. Yeah, look, I put a ring on it. Yeah, see? Look how pretty my <laughs> ring is. <laughs> I'm going to go to caroling practice. Oh, yeah, Jules is so in a caroling what, group. Look at what I'm wearing. 
I'm wearing my. Oh, you're wearing your Pokemon crochet or Pokemon Christmas. Sweater. Yeah, go, if you go That's in the it. cat cam, I'll switch cams so they can see your cute little sweater. Look at that cute sweater. They can't see your head, but that's okay. Yeah, he's he's a little he's a little antsy today. Yeah. A little bit. Well, can I pop and say hi before I go? Well, thank you. <laughs> Have fun. Also, he is young at heart, so it doesn't matter how old he is. <laughs> yeah, I'm young at heart. <laughs> Naughty Flowers got it perfect. I'm 31. 31. Good, good, good job, Naughty Flowers. Wow, we're the same age. That's cool. Okay, I think we are. This is gonna be my last stitch of round 10, I believe. Maybe I'm off. Let's see. Nope, never mind. A few more stitches. Yes, only a few more though. And then we will be done with round 10. And that's like the the top half of our turkey leg here. We still have a decent amount more rounds to go, but you know, that's a pretty good start. It's a pretty good start right there. It's gonna go like this. Let's see how it's gonna come down. Yeah, I love it when Christmas time comes around because she starts wearing that sweater a lot more. And it's a very cute sweater. Yeah, so she is in a caroling group this year. Very exciting. Um, she started, uh, She. it's been really fun because, so normally Jules is very much uh, one of those people that doesn't like to um, start celebrating a holiday way way before everybody else starts ho starts to celebrate holidays you know how like you go into joanne fabrics and it's like august and they're like it's halloween she hates that <laughs> not a fan i on the other hand kind of love it i love celebrating holidays really early i'm ready to celebrate christmas right now you know normally that's not the case for jules but because she started doing a caroling group she's been singing christmas songs and it's been Christmas in the house in November, and it's just really cool. I, I like it a lot. It's really, really cool. The weird part, though, is that because it's an acapella Christmas group... Um, sorry, wait one second. Let me just count my stitches really quick. Five, six, seven, okay. Eight, hold on. Nine and ten, like that, right? Yeah. Okay, because it's an acapella Christmas group and she is an alto, um, uh, everybody's singing parts are all different than like the original song. So for example, this is not literal, but as like an example, uh, where a song might be jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Because she is singing acapella in the alto part, it's like, she'll be going like, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, or something like that, you know? Like, it'll be, like, totally not the melody for the song, and that's what I'll hear a bunch, is just like, like, just like she's been singing, um, Yahoo Doris, Yahoo da 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 da, the Grinch song, and it's, it's been like, Yahoo Doris, Yahoo Doris, or something like that. It's so weird. It's such like a mind trip. Um, it's it's been really fun, but it's it's also very weird to like just hear Christmas songs in a different melody than you've ever heard them before, and you're like, what the heck is going on? Um, but it is it's pretty fun too. She's very excited, uh, and and really really enjoying it. Also, they pay extremely well, which is nice. That is also nice. Leany's tree is going up this weekend. I actually wanted to do the exact same Leany. Oh, really? Crochet for beginners. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, 
I don't think I ever wanted to be seen as older than I was. I don't think my whole like life I've ever cared to be seen as older than I am. I think I've only ever wanted to be seen as younger than I am. Because if you can't tell, I have a very young heart. Young spirit. Um <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes sometimes that's a problem. Sometimes I need to grow up, but do I? I don't want it. <laughs> but I don't want to. I like being a kid. All right, round seven. Oh no, 10, 11. Round 11 is done. Now I'm on round 12. Juni. Yeah, I don't mind leveling up either. Like Naughty Flower said, I don't mind leveling, leveling up. I'm, I'm fine with growing. I don't think my brain will ever grow up, though. I think I am locked into being a a child. <laughs> Loving video games, liking skateboarding, and uh, staying up too late and eating too much candy. That is kind of my whole vibe. I remember thinking the other day I was like eating uh, Rice Krispie treats and playing Super Smash Brothers. Like this was probably yesterday. No, two two or three days ago. And Jules was like, you were a child. And I was like, think about how excited. If I went back in time and like went to my childhood self and I was like, yo, 12 year old Lou, get this. We are 31 years old playing Super Smash Brothers, eating Rice Krispie Treats, and staying up till 3 a.m. I think he'd be like, oh yeah, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little, do little does he know that actually we are in between playing those games, we are also working. And, <laughs> and we actually do have to work a lot too. But other than that, I goof that one up. Let's try that stitch again. There we go. Which, by the way, what are we making here? Find out of it. Mashed potato and gravy hat looks like it is going to win the day. I love it. I love that mashed potato and we should probably do like a little bit of butter you know on top of the mashed potato hmm one thing i'm a little worried about is making the gravy using the same brown as the turkey leg might be weird so i might use a slightly different shade of brown for our gravy but we'll add it after we're done with this part anyhow and if we're going to do a mashed potato gravy hat then we need to make the face kind of like um, maybe we make it lazy and, and like chubby, chubby and lazy. What do we think? I'm that's with like a little tongue out. I feel like whenever I eat mashed potatoes, I get really, really sleepy in a good way. I don't know. What do you think? Chubby and lazy, happy tongue out what kind of suggestions for the mouth or the or the face itself sprinkle of chives in the mash it's a thought <laughs> yeah like a full yes yes exactly like a food coma face that's what i was thinking like like mm. Isaplay. Oh yeah, dude. I am such a D and D dork too, Lini. I absolutely am a D and D dork. Can I go on a D and D spiel because I have a character that I'm really I like. It's gonna be my last uh, campaign with this character. Like I only have like three or four more sessions left, 
I have a character. His name is BB. Um, it's short for Bun Bun. Uh, he is a um, a doll. He's actually a crocheted bunny doll. Uh, that is Jules's character's doll from her childhood. That has been possessed by the soul of someone from New York City in our world that has been he whose name was um uh uh bernie something i can't remember what his name is and honestly neither can bb because what happened was he had stolen a trident from a god um uh it was it was a god in in the world that we're playing in um, but it was also a god in our world because the worlds kind of like, you know, worked together. Uh, so it was it was essentially like Poseidon in our world. And I stole their trident, not thinking anything magical about it. And then they caught me and took my soul and threw dimensions and put it into the body of this doll um, to keep an eye on uh, Kai, who is Jules's character's uh, player. Uh, and so I am a warlock put into the body of a bunny. I don't remember my past at all. I still have my personality, but I don't remember anything. Every now and then I'll remember something from like New York. I'll be like, oh man, you guys, have you guys ever had a hot dog? And then I'll be like, uh, you know, one of the other characters will be like, what's a hot dog? And I'll be like, it's like, um, Hmm, actually, I don't know. What is a hot dog? And I'll just like stare off into into the, you know, ether, thinking like, what is a hot dog? Anyhow, he's a warlock and rogue, and we actually just leveled up to level 20, which I'm not actually really excited about because I feel like it's not earned, and I don't know what to do with level 20. It's too much power. It's too much power! Okay, so I, by the way, I'm on round 13. It's too much power, and I don't know what to do with it. And my favorite part of playing this game is not the actual battling, but the role-playing in between battling. That's my favorite part of Dungeons & Dragons. And the Dungeon Master is great, but he really likes battles. He doesn't really like doing role-playing as much. And I'm like, man, my character sucks at battling because he's a warlock. I can like shoot people, but that's pretty much it. It's a lot of fun though. I really, really enjoy D&D a lot. I think my character is really fun. Uh, I, I'm i definitely like the cartoony uh, comic relief in our party because everybody's like a serious, like serious person. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like this doofy little bunny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and exactly like that. That's exactly what I'm saying, Lainey. See you later, Twiz. Thank you for trying out that new pattern, by the way. I will check out your picture after the live stream and, and send you a message and stuff. Um, thank you for testing it out. I really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, that's that's exactly what I'm saying, Lainey. Like, level 20 already, it's like... I don't know. We, I mean, we've been playing for like a couple of years, like a year, maybe like almost two years, year and a half, something around there. And he really wants us to be level 20 for our last battle. But I'm like, dude, I don't want to be level 20. Not even a little bit. There's no part of me wants to be level 20. That is too much power. What I like about D&D is I like having very few amount of things that I have to be creative with. That's what I love about D&D is the creativity creativity and imagination that comes with playing Dungeons & Dragons. When you're level 20, you have too much. You, you, like my, I have so much that I can do that it kind of like, I don't know what to do. It's the same reason why like, like when I crochet and I give myself a, a like uh, uh, rules 
So if I like the mini Gurumi is a great example. So I'm, I like making these mini Gurumi patterns. I have to do a pattern in 100 stitches or less with no sewing at all. Great. I've got rules that I have to work around and that forces me to be creative with how I use my stitches because I only have so many stitches that I can use. In the same way, in Dungeons and Dragons, I really like it when I only have like six spells that I can use and I have to be creative with them, which is why I choose really weird spells like gaseous form, stuff like that. Like spells that I'll never, like never would be useful in battle, but in, outside of battle or even in battle, if I want to be really clever with it, um, I don't know. I just really like being clever with my, with my gameplay um, more so than I like being powerful. Uh, let me give you a good example of that. My character can, um, has, a, is a warlock, which his special ability, like pretty much every character's got like one thing that they're, that they use a lot of. For me, it's my Eldritch Blast. It's basically, I shoot like energy beams out of my little, my little crocheted fingertips. Um, and it shoots like this big energy beam out, right? My special thing with my Eldritch Blast is that I can push people 10 feet if I hit them with my blast, which means that I can use that in such creative ways. I use it for things like, um, I like to use it by hitting just the corner of someone to make them spin around in a circle and be facing the other way. Or I like to push them once this way and then once this way to push them off a cliff. Uh, I like being clever with how I use that those abilities rather than doing a lot of damage. I like to be clever with it. Um, yeah, that's my favorite part of Dungeons and Dragons and just games and life in general. I like creativity quite a lot. Um, so being level 20 is kind of just like a little, just a tiny bit of like a, oh man, I don't know if I want to be level 20. I like, I was level 18 for like one session, you know, I, I'm not ready. I don't feel ready. Um, but yeah, that's that's my little tangent and complaint. And yeah. And, and just, I don't know, mindset when it comes to Dungeons & Dragons. Hope I didn't go too much on a tangent there. Sorry if you're not really into that kind of, into Dungeons & Dragons or whatever. And, and <laughs> I was boring, but... I don't know. It's fun. It's, it's a really, really fun uh, thing to play. I highly suggest you try it out. Um, for the very, the minimum of why I love Dungeons and Dragons is that you get to pretend. You get to play make-believe. You get to be, pretend that you're something that you're not. And it's very therapeutic in that way. Because you get to, like, be angry about something that you're not really angry about in real life. Or you get to be sad or happy about things that are imaginary and it's just it's therapeutic in that way i really like it a lot um a highly suggested rudzia rudzia try it out it's a very very fun game um you can find a lot of groups our our group is all online so we just play on discord and do voice chat and then we have like a video or like like a like the board on screen with our little icons for our characters but it's mostly just um, uh, just talking. Oh my gosh, Jill! Just came back from a craft fair and sold a lot of your crocheted animals. Congratulations! Oh my gosh, how did it go, Jill? Did it go well? Oh, I hope it went well. Thanks for joining, by the way. And uh, truly, like, I hope you had a great uh, craft fair. Oh, that reminds me, actually. I'm doing a craft fair too. Uh, next uh, Friday, uh, or I'm sorry, next Saturday. So November 18th and 19th in Pomona, California. Uh, I'll be doing the Soul, SoCal Fiber Fair. You can find it by just going to SoCalFiberFair.com or um, just uh, searching SoCal Fiber Fair on Google. You'll probably find it. But I'm doing a fiber fair and going to be selling my crochet kits there and just meeting up with people talking uh, crochet and talking fiber. And yeah, I'm really, really excited. 
uh, I hope you guys, I hope if you get a chance and you live close-ish, uh, you can come by. It's a couple hours for me, so I'm going to have a little bit of a drive, but I'm really excited. Four. Um, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous because I'm going to be so tired. I'm going to be so tired, but I'm also pretty excited. Oh my gosh, the mini turkey leg was your first pattern, Tyke? That's so cool. That's so cool. One, two, three, four, five. Decrease. Oh, okay, so we, I, wow, I wasn't even, I was going so fast that I didn't even think about how many crochet stitches we have. One, two, three. Wow. For some reason, I feel like I goofed up somewhere. But I guess not. Let's see four one two three four five rounds of decreasing in a row see what did i mess up somewhere let's count three four five decrease one two three four five decrease i feel like i messed up somewhere like it's i don't know i i, I don't know where i would have messed up though because one, two, three, four. See, I only have four rounds of decreasing in a row. There should be five. 18. Plus three. So that one should be 21. That one should be 24. That one should be 27. But this one's 33. Unless I messed up. Hold on. Let's count our stitches back here. We're going to start right there. I'm going to count those stitches around. Actually, let's do it this way. There. Okay, so from there it was... Actually, we're going to go here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so that round should be 30. Oh, I see what I did. I just added an extra round of single crochets. Eh, whatever. It's not the end of the world. Okay, I, I just I added a bonus round. Bonus round! Extra height by one. Okay, let's add our face. We need a vote, actually, on our face. Oh, no, we don't. We chose. We want a chubby, sleepy face because they are going to be full of, or I've just eaten a bunch of uh, mashed potatoes. Bunch of taters. So we're gonna go ahead and put, I'm gonna put one eye, I don't know, somewhere. Right there is probably fine. You know, we'll do it between the decreasing. So it's gonna be like around here, maybe. And around, I don't know, like somewhere around there. We'll, we'll go ahead. We're just going to put these here for right now. That might be a little low on the face, and they're in different rounds. So maybe like here and here instead. Yeah, it's not, that's not bad for like just guessing. Uh, and then we're going to sew on the mouth, uh, and I might have to move the eyes. But we'll see. We're going to do a chubby face. Uh, I want to do eyelids. I want to do uh, maybe a tongue. That's our goal here. Chubby face, eyelids, and maybe a tongue. As if they are hungry or tasty or or maybe a toothpick coming out of it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Toothpick? Tongue? Something like that? Where is our most recent chubby face so I can use a... Here we go. We'll go up like that. It's going to come out through the center of there. Right. So we're going to go like this. Yeah. We'll try that. 
Oh, yes, what Samantha said, hit the thumbs up if you can. Uh, that would be really great. Hey, Samantha, by the way, I watched your live stream the other day. I totally forgot to comment in the chat, but I was watching your live stream. <laughs> it was pretty fun. I realized... Oh, she doesn't even know I'm watching this. After you were done, I was like, oh, I didn't comment. I should have commented. I'm sorry I didn't comment. But I was there. At least for some of it. I was watching while I was uh, playing or something. Playing a game. Um, okay, one down right there. That should be good. You think you crocheted the turkey leg inside out and it just looks like a blob. Oh no. <laughs> turkey blob. That's what they call us. Turkey blob. I think we're gonna try to get like right in the center of this stitch. Like that. That's it. I love doing the chubby face. I'm, I'm like kind of obsessed with it. Go around that, like this, over, look at that, that's a good chubby. And then we go like this, and we'll go into the stitch right there. And we hope and pray that it looks right. And if it doesn't, well, then we stop, then we never crochet again for the rest of our life. Eh, the problem with the chubby face for these turkey legs is that the yarn is already so dark that it's kind of hard to see it. But you can kind of see it. See? It looks a little chubby. Especially when we put like sleepy eyes and stuff on them. It'll really come together, I think. Let's go ahead and double knot this. What do we think? Do we think tongue or a toothpick coming out of the mouth? Tongue or toothpick? You know what? We'll do a vote. Because that's more fun. Okay, let's go. We'll, I'll put a, put a vote in right now. We'll end our other vote and we'll say tongue or there we go tongue toothpick or neither one um all right so while y'all are voting on that let's go ahead i'm gonna add uh the backs of our eyes i actually do like the placement of those eyes and then we'll add the eyelids over the eyes. I think I'm gonna use like a beige. What do we think about that? Like a beige for the eyelids? We'll use that beige also for like the, the gravy. Now, unfortunately the beige is not included in uh, this season's crochet kit, but it was included in season one. So if you crocheted season one's kit or you have season one's kit, you'll probably still have some beige left over because we actually didn't need it for that much in season one. So we're gonna use that. I'm gonna use our leftover beige from season one. Like, look how much extra I had from season one, so much. Uh, and I think this would be a good contrasting colors for the eyes. So we're gonna do like eyelids like that, kinda, so he looks like a little bit sleepy. That's our goal. And then we can use a pink from last, uh, last week too. So I think we'll go there and there, like one stitch over, and we'll go up slightly. So I want it to be like tilted slightly out, you know? Just so like 
because if it's like straight across it might look a little grumpy but if i do it like slightly up like that he'll look kind of sleepy and we might need to like double it up triple it up i don't know just yet but we'll try we'll try just like that one i'll do there and this one i'll do here yeah that works like right like that let's try that yeah, we, we might do this like once or twice just to make it a little bit thicker of an eyelid. But you see, so like I think like if we do that, it'll look like a little bit sleepy and also just like kind of kind more kind. That's the goal here. Yeah, that like, like that's kind of like what I'm trying to do here, Zoe's eyelids. I guess it kind of looks more like eyebrows. But here, let's try to double it up. Maybe if I double it up, it'll start to go over the eye a little bit more and might look a little bit more like eyelids. I do have a way to do eyelids in a different method, but I think I'll do that at another time. Let's see, if we do two and we make them in two different spots, is it gonna be a problem or is it gonna be good? Let's try it. Let's try it without doing that first. Ugh. Ouch. All right, do we like the double? I think the double's pretty good. I kind of wish he was a little bit more sleepy looking though. Well, actually that's pretty good if I like bend it over it a little bit, like imagine that on both sides. Especially if he has a tongue. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, I'm going to double knot these ones, and we'll try it on the other side. We'll just, we'll do our best to try to duplicate it. No promises. No promises at all. There we go. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, we still got a little... A decent amount more to do especially if you're gonna do the mashed potatoes especially since we're doing taters tater I hardly know her Let's try to do the same thing on the other side. Batch. Up to here. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, right? What do we think? Zoe, what do you think about that? I'm gonna double it up again, just because technically this one's doubled up, even though you can't really even see the bottom one. Just so that there's some consistency. I don't know if it'll really matter, but it's worth a shot. Ooh, the squirrels are running on top of the roof right now. I can hear them. Stitch that, and let's see how that goes. Yeah. yeah, I wish this one did that too more. I think I pull out the bottom one a little bit better. Looks pretty good. Looks like an old man a little bit. Old man turkey leg. Ew. <laughs> hey! Huh, you gonna eat me? Come on, I'm still good. I'm only a few years old. What's that? Oh, that's just a little bit of mold. Don't worry about that. I'm just an old man turkey leg is all. 
Oh, man, turkey leg coming at you. No one can stop me now. I'm a turkey. All right. Tongue. It's time for a tongue. Where is the pink yarn? Did I use all the pink yarn? Impossible. C'est impossible. Where are you, pink yarn? You cannot hide from me. Uh-huh. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We did vote tongue, right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's add our little tongue. Uh, up or down? Up or down, up or down, up or down. We'll try, we'll try down first. I think down usually looks better. Maybe I should have made him sleeping. Oh well. We've made our beds. We will sleep in them. Like that. Sleepy turkey leg. He looks sleepy, right? I don't know. What do you think? So, what's your opinion on that? I'm gonna tie it, but I can always get rid of it. If you are like, ew, no, bad, get out of here, Lou, with your, this is dumb. You know how Zoe talks to us. So rude sometimes. Oopsies, hold on. Leany likes it. Leany beanie bobini. Okay. The scissors are getting a little dull. What do you think? I like that face. I'll do a big thing of mashed potatoes right here. And like kind of oozing down a little bit. Ooh, in the turkey leg color, you think the eyelids would be better in the turkey leg color itself. Okay. Hmm. I feel like it would get, it's gonna get lost in there if we use the turkey leg color. That's what I'm worried about. You know, it'll it'll look like okay, but but I get what you're saying. Like this kind of looks like eye eyebrows, not like eyelids as much. I mean like if we can get it like over like that maybe. I do get what you're saying, though. Rude, Rude Z thinks it looks uh, it looks dumb, but in a good way. Yeah. Have I ever crocheted anything from Lord of the Rings? Yes, I have. Um, I've crocheted uh, uh, Gandalf and Treebeard and a cave troll and um, a bunch of stuff, actually. I'm going to stick with this right now. I think I'm gonna stick with this, and then if if I change my mind at the end, I can always, you know, do it again. 
Oh, like a bottom eyelid too? Okay, okay. Let's, um... You can see me debating. A lot of, a lot of debating here. I don't think it's a bad idea though, Zoe. It's just, I don't know if I want to put in the work. <laughs> That's the truth. Because I don't know if I want to take them out and do it again. Especially since we have a uh, mashed potato hat. I think I'm going to stick with it for now. And if I need to change it later, if, if I do decide to change it later, I will. Um, the other problem that I'm currently having is that I need to use this brown. Like, I can't. I guess I could pull from the inside. But I don't really want to. We're going to stick with it for right now. And if we need to change it later, we totally can. That's that's what I'm going with. It's not that I necessarily think you're wrong. It's that we've been crocheting now for three hours. And we still have a mashed potato hat to make. One, two, three, four, invisible decrease. Got it. Four and decrease. Yeah, the tree bird is really cute. Um, I'll try to find it. It's a very, it's very cute. I never did a pattern for it. it the idea was it was going to be a new stitched character, um, and it will still be a new stitched character eventually, but it needs a lot more work. I used uh, something called a seed stitch for it. Since, you know, it was a tree and all. So that goes in. We got to stuff it a bit. Because we're going to add the mashed potato bit afterwards. Is Jimbo in a spot, by the way? Can't see. Well, whatever. We're going to stuff it just a bit. We can add stuffing afterwards, too. We don't need a crazy amount. Go, go. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna put our bone face first in the bottom. I kind of already made this like really tiny, so it's gonna really just barely fit in there. Eh. Say bye. Enjoy your life inside of a turkey leg. Yeah, that's good for now. Uh, I'll stuff it up more um, once we finish this last few rounds though. I believe I have two more rounds left, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, two more rounds. First one is a decreasing one. This part's really hard because you have to like kind of crochet with the leg in there. So you have to like just kind of work your way around it, not accidentally poke into the leg itself. One, two, three. And this is what I mean by like, it's really hard to remove the, the bone once you get the meat around it. Uh, am I going to do a stitched st live on stream? Wait, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, probably planning on doing that uh, probably in the new year. Uh, near closer to my birthday. Because that's kind of like the fun thing that I like to do on my birthday. Um, yeah, it kind of feels like every year in January, there's like a new stitched character and a new pattern and stuff. So that's kind of my plan. For right now i just have so much that i need to finish up for these seasons first uh and then so low key not low key but low key the um the plan is lava run in next year as like the big kickstarter 
and then uh, you know assuming that goes well then I do the same thing the year afterwards for stitched to do a Kickstarter for like a book a stitched book and a, and a set that's made out of like pop out pieces and stuff and basically do the exact same thing that I'm doing for lava run but for stitched is kind of the goal um, you know barring that the stitched one or the lava run goes well that's kind of the plan there there we go um, and then we want to front loops only increase slip stitch one And then with that, you know, obviously I would do a whole bunch of um, live games and stuff like that for Stitched, uh, which is what we'll be doing with Lava Run in uh, in July. We'll definitely be doing a lot of like playing a game live and stuff like that. One. And a slip stitch here. Yeah. How's it looking? It's pretty good. You see how it's a little longer than most of the turkey legs? Because I accidentally put an extra round in there uh, by oopsies. When is my birthday? My birthday is January 18th is my birthday. It'll be uh, directly the week after I get back from Japan. So hopefully I've got the energy to do a birthday crochet along thing. Uh, it's definitely the plan. I'm just like, you know, slightly worried that I go to Japan and I get really tired. <laughs> I come back and I'm like, I'm too tired. Or I get sick, hopefully not that. But you know, sometimes when you travel, you get sick. Okay. Couple more stitches here. Now, technically, our main part of our turkey leg is just about to be done, other than stuffing it a little bit more. But obviously, we want to add our mashed potato hat first. Okay, and then stuff it. Okay, Lini, thanks for joining. Sorry, I just saw that. Bye. You know what is a bummer right now? That it gets dark at freaking 4.30. It's like, what? Come on, man. Give me a little bit more light. It's so frustrating. Isn't that frustrating? In California, we voted to get rid of that. I don't know why it's st we're still doing time change here. Because we voted. We were like, uh-uh, I don't want time change. And everybody's like, yeah, me neither. And then they were like, actually, though, just kidding. We're not going to change. We're, we're, you're stuck with it. If the rest of the country has to do it, then so do you. And we're like, but what about Arizona? And they're like, ah, we don't care about Arizona. You have to have time change. Or like, hmm. Hmm. Yes, this is from DK64. Wow, good ear, Valkyrie. Very good ear. Impressive. Japan should be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. Um, we're going for quite a long time, actually. We're going for like 12 days. We'll be in, uh, we're leaving on Christmas night. Getting on a plane, Christmas night. I'm super excited for that. It's going to be like, Christmas, 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 bye. <laughs> uh, and then we'll be gone till, we're going to be in Kyoto for the new year, which I'm super excited about. Uh, 
Dude, I, yes. At least you don't have to work to walk to work in the dark. I totally feel that, Zoe. I totally feel that. Do you guys? I didn't realize you guys did time change in Canada. For some reason, I thought that was. I don't know. I don't know why. Do you do time? You do time change in Canada? And what do you guys think about time change in Canada? Because time up there, like light up there, has got to be even dip more, like weird than it is here just because of like the location to the sun right like you are slightly more north so winters are going to be a little bit darker even quicker by probably like half an hour or so and then i don't know am i just making things up probably probably you know me I don't do it on purpose. I'm just assuming things. Jules hates it when I assume things. She'll be like, do you know that? I'll be like, no, but I'm like, based on this, that, and this, that's probably the outcome. And she'll be like, if you don't know, don't just say it. I'm like, okay, you're, you're right. But also, I'm gonna assume in my brain. In my noggin. Okay, I think that is enough stuffing for the leg itself it looks pretty cute liking it liking it next up we need to put on a mashed potato hat and maybe change the eyebrows but no promises uh let's start with white obviously for the taters themselves I think we'll just do basically like a ball with like an ooze on the outside of the ball. Uh, maybe create some lumps in there. We'll use a little bit of yellow as a square for like butter. And then we'll put some uh, gravy. Actually, we'll put gravy on it and then do um, some butter too. So I, I got a plan. I definitely got a plan here. Ontario does daylight savings. And yeah, Cooper said, oh, wow, you guys are all in Canada. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize that. Tig, Cooper, and Zoe are all Canadians. Well, how cool is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so we're just going to go like this. Um, I'll probably increase up to 12. Hopefully it doesn't look like ice cream on his head. I don't think it will. Mashed potato does kind of look like ice cream though sometimes. Oh, and then the chives. Yeah, I think I think chives are a good idea. It, it'll really sell that it's like a savory mashed potato is not, um, you know, uh, ice cream. But we're basically going to do this twice. What we're making right now. We're going to make a basically like a little ball uh, or, or half a ball to sew on and then uh, before we sew it on we're gonna add gravy to it and maybe we'll make like a long gravy and eh, maybe we will sew it on yeah I don't know we're, we're, we're figuring it out we'll figure it out um, next up I'm gonna increase one more time up just slightly I think we'll increase by four so one two three and four yeah. Well, and Rudzia is wow. Everybody here's Canada. Canada represent. I've been watching alone. Don't don't uh, if you've seen the show before uh, or or seen the season that I'm going to be talking about. Don't spoil it for me, please. I don't want to know who wins, but. I've been watching Alone uh, season 10, I think. I'm not really sure. Um, but there is one person there that's from Canada that just put up like a Canadian flag using his underwear. And it's, it was very cute. Uh, and he's my favorite. I really want him to win. See, so if I do that, I'll do one round of single crochets to make it high, like a little taller. And then we'll do like ooze around the outside not ooze but like um 
like kind of like this, like a frill thing around the outside of it. Ooh, a cranberry beret. Oh my gosh, that's clever. Cranberry, Crescendro, coming in with the good ideas. That's too good. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, Rodzia is from Poland. Oh, how cool. Teach us, teach us a word in Polish. Teach us, teach us how to say, um, teach us how to say, uh, you know what? Teach us how to say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching in Polish. You might need to sound it out. Florida representing, South Dakota representing. I've always wanted to see South Dakota, actually. I've always wanted to visit there. I've been to Florida. Orlando, obviously. Um, and somewhere else. Can't remember the other place. It was in the same trip. Oh yeah, that's gonna I'm gonna need I'm gonna need some pronunciation help. But Brudzia says for thanks for watching ZQJ za Ogladane Dani. Ogladani. ZQJ za Ogladani. Did I say that right? Who wants to bet? I definitely did not. Yeah, those are some crazy letters. The A and the, yeah, that, that's some interesting, interesting letters. Do you think that's big enough for the, I feel like that looks like mashed potatoes, especially if I put gravy on it and then a little on top. Yeah, I think we're, I think I'm happy with this. What we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna do a frill along the inside seam. So like, actually, I think I might do it a little bit different than the other one. Like that. Oh yes. Okay, okay, I'll try to put it in a translator. ZQG. Let's let's just um let's see if I can just copy it. How do I copy that? Oh, it won't let me. Okay, so we're gonna have to type it. I don't know how to type that. Okay, wait. Oh wait, wait. No, I can't. I can't figure out how to type it. I can't figure it out. I'll have to do it afterwards. <laughs> what should I do for dinner? Jules requested risotto, and I did a good risotto last week, but I don't think I'm going to be able to handle that today. I mean, I guess I could try. Oh my God, my dad the other day, my dad yesterday was, or not yesterday, like last week was like, hey, I got a friend who wants a Santa hat. Can you make me a Santa hat for her? And I was like, um, maybe, like, it's gonna take me a long time though. And he's like, I'm, I'm hoping that you can make like one of those really, really long Santa hats. And he's talking about ones that I used to do in high school. They were like so long, like, like down to the ground long because you'd wear it as a scarf and i was like no no i'm sorry i'm not making that <laughs> like like there's no way there's no way that, that's gonna take me weeks i have a job i got other things i gotta crochet and i don't even make hats anymore and he was like oh come on please i'll, I'll pay for it and i was like dad if i charge someone for that the time alone if I charge like 25 an hour, which is pretty low, that's gonna take me like 12 hours probably. So like over $300 probably that I'd have to charge for that. I can't, I can't, I can't. I feel so bad. 
I still feel bad, obviously. That looks like mashed potatoes a little bit, right? Especially if I put the gravy and stuff. I think that's not bad. Um, you ever get people do that? Though? You ever get like family requesting things, not realizing like the commitment that that's going to require? It's so hard to say no, you know? It's just, it's really difficult. I have a, I have a difficult time, especially with parents, you know, like letting parents down. But this is for like a complete stranger. Like, I, that's what I told him. I was like, if it's for a, like, your best friend, then yeah, I could do that. But this is, if this is just for like someone that you know, that's a big ask. He said he got it, he understood, and it wasn't a big deal, but I still feel bad. Does that ever happen to you? Do you get, like, requests for things that you're like, No, I can't. I can't do that. It's mostly that I just can't do it in time. Like, in order to get it by Christmas, on top of, like, all the other things that I have to do right now, I'd have to do it, like, in my spare time. I don't know. I'm going through... I'm, I'm talking too much about it. Um, okay. Top of the head? I'm thinking side, like this. You know? Yeah, I'm thinking side. It kind of looks like a little, cute little beret kind of thing. Not a beret. Like a... Like a... Like a... Like the hat a, uh... Like an old lady would wear. Exactly, Zoe. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Your friend asked you to make her a purse, and you're like, well, I don't really make purses, though. Like, that's, like, that's just not what I do. And I don't really want to take the time to learn how to do this. On top of, like, actually doing it. And it's just like, I, that's, you know, I got into this because I like to do it, not because I have to do it. Or want it, you know? Yeah. Had a lady ask you to do custom look-alike dolls for Thanksgiving? Ooh, that's a big, that's a big request. I don't think I'm gonna sew this on like perfectly. I think I'm just gonna like kind of. It also, it's a little funky on the back, but whatever. It's mashed potatoes, you know. Um, I think I'm just gonna do like a few stitches here and there to sew this on because I don't think it needs to be like the most secure hat in the world. Something like that, maybe. I like the mashed potatoes so far. It's not bad. I'm really excited to put the gravy on it though. Gravy's my favorite part about mashed potatoes. And if sometimes I go to a family event and my uncle makes like really, really good mashed potatoes, but he's also vegetarian, so he doesn't make gravy. And I'm like, dude, mashed potatoes without gravy is like, like that's a sin, man. That's like, that's like illegal. I could call the police right now and they would come and arrest you and they'd be happy. They'd be like, great, you got another one off the streets. <laughs> another criminal off the streets that didn't make gravy for their mashed potatoes. It just feels wrong, man. It just feels wrong. Okay, we're gonna add some stuffing in there. Shoot, we should just use stuffing for the mashed potatoes. Actually too much stuffing. Yeah, my cousin, my cousin asked me to crochet her a starfish, and she knows how to crochet. And I was like, dude, make your own starfish. You know how much more, in, like, I would be so much more stoked if you made it yourself. And so would you. She wanted me to make it for her friend's birthday. And I was like, 
It's your friend. You make it. You know how to crochet. You make it, Starfish. You know how much more, like, special that's going to be coming from you than it is from me? Like, I don't even want to... Like, no. 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 If she didn't know how to crochet, it'd be a different story, but... I think that looks kind of mashed potato-y. I really think the gravy's going to sell it, though. The gravy and the butter. Let's go ahead and double knot this. This turkey leg looks like just such a sweet old lady turkey leg. Oh, accidental vegan gravy. I'm totally into that, actually. Like, if you can make a good vegan gravy, I've had it. it you can do it. I know it's possible. But that's why I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Mashed potatoes ain't nothing without the gravy. Okay, we need, uh, we want to do a little yellow for butter on the top, right? We want to do a little bit of gravy now. Um, I think we use this color for gravy, right? Like a, our, our tan again. What do you think? Like this? Gravy oozing over. And I think I'll just improvise it. start with six. And then I think, should I go up to 12? It's getting dark in here. Okay, so if I do this, I just make it ooze and then do a little piece of butter over here in yellow. We'll do it a little off, off slightly because like this and then when I get it to this end I'll do like the oozy part. Actually I'll do a little yeah I'll do a little ooze right now. One, two. Let's see what happens if I go like this. Like ooze, ooze, like that. And then over here, I want to make this one go like ooze over the mashed potatoes itself. So we'll go one, two, three, let's go four. Let's hope this looks right. Two, three, two, we'll do one there. Like that. Like that. I should do one more ooze actually right here. What do we think, though? Does that look like oozing gravy? I could also try, like, needle felting. We could try needle felting it on. What do we think about needle felting? 
I don't know. This just kind of not is just not selling it to me perfect. I mean, it's not bad actually. It really isn't bad. Especially the butter on there. It's making me hungry. What do we think? Do we do this or do I try needle felting? We only get one shot at the needle felting though. Here, why don't, while you guys are thinking that, uh, here, I'll do my last uh, stitches here. Which is just gonna be one more little piece of ooze. Like this. Okay, we like it. Ooh, but Corshandro thinks we should try needle felting. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Okay. So it'd be like that. Improvised gravy. And then a butter like right here, like a little square of butter. Uh, we're gonna use the yellow from the kit itself for the butter. Which, yeah, we opened it. And I'm just gonna do a really, really simple, just like cube. Not cube, but kind of cube. Naughty also thinks that we should do needle felting. I think needle felting might look more legit, but I don't know. So there's our butter. Okay, so if we went with this one, it'd be like this. Here. Look, there's our chive too. Like that, and then this butter on top of it like this. Is it too much is our question here. Do we think that looks like mashed potatoes or does that just look like a mess on top of someone, something's noggin? I kind of think we should needle felt. Let me grab the needle felting option. What color is that? Is that like a black? It's like a dark brown. We don't want that one. Oh my gosh, look at the cat. Plus I need to go in the thing there. Hopefully we don't wake him up. so cute oh my god he's so cute okay needle felting options like that brown yeah i think we should try needle felting i think it'll be more fun and it'll look more like i think it'll be more fun okay let's try it enough enough talking about it let's just do it let's just live our life and and mess this up if we need to. Okay. We 
don't have a lot of needle felt here to work with. Uh, actually, yeah, we do. We got more than enough. Right, we can do this. And the idea is going to be like a little ooze. We're actually going to use felt for this, and like needle felting felt, instead of doing like, right, like that. Like, honestly, that's actually, oh, that's all we really need. Hey, we got another Louie. How you doing, Louie? Good name is good. This. Right. Right. Okay. Here goes nothing. Oh, this, I'm so nervous when I do this part. this into the fibers a lot though because I want it to be flat Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna put more on there, but just I just wanna see what it'd look like with the butter on it. Yeah, okay, I think that looks more like gravy already. And then I'll just have it like ooze over this side. <laughs> it looks like a fried egg a little bit. <laughs> It's a better gravy color. Okay, I'm glad you think so, Zoe. Okay, so I, I kind of want it to be like this, you know? Like ooze over. Like that. And then maybe a little bit more over there, too. But we'll start right here. Yeah, needle felt thing's really fun. It's just scary because you can't really undo it. I mean, you can a little bit, but, you know, there's only, like, so much you can do about it. Actually, dude, I think this looks way more like gravy. I gotta be careful not to stab all the way through to my hand. I'm nervous about that. It's always funny, I get like a needle felting kit every now and then, and they have like so many needles in there, and I only ever need one. And I wonder like, how much needle felting would I have to do to really wear this needle out? I mean, maybe I should try changing the needle over, but I don't really want to yet. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're gonna add just a little bit more, like so it's like more oozing over here. Like this. A little less. This. Right? Needle felt thing's so interesting because it's just so much more freeform. It's like it's like going from like 
I don't know. It's just really freeform. You can do kind of like anything you want with it. Including hurt yourself. How fun! Zelda music in our background. That's nice. Okay. How are we feeling? Is there anywhere on that that needs more or less gravy? I think maybe a little more right there. To fill in that little pocket. Like there. That. A little less than that. See you later, Tyke! Thank you so much, Ty. I'll see you next week for our birthday. Uh, it's going to be on Thursday, by the way. Don't forget. Thursday at um, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time next week. It's special time for a special birthday. Fill that in a little bit better. Right? How well, how are we feeling? Butter goes here. That's why I'm not really putting much on this side because I just know that the butter is going to cover up some of it anyhow. Like that. Do we need the butter? Yeah, I think we do. Like that. I, I'm going to sew it on so it should be sewn a little bit more like in. But uh, actually, maybe we don't need the butter. Just like indent the. That looks like a pretty good gravy blob. I don't know. I might be being too critical on myself right here, but I kind of think that I should do. Maybe I need more gravy over on the other side. Looks like a duck mouth. Or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks really good from right there. It's just when you look at it like this, it's like, what is going on there? Eh, it's not bad. Maybe the butter is just too big. Big butter. Band name? Big butter. Band name? Could be a good band name. Let's try, um, I'll just try a little tiny, like, ring of butter instead. I'll try that. One, two. Let's go five. Slip stitch here. That 
that through. Imagine, if you will, that amount of butter. That's a better amount of butter. Better butter, fan name. Maybe. Like that. Actually, yeah, I like that more. Maybe even over here. Maybe in the top. No, yeah, maybe like over here. No, that kind of looks weird. I think back here more, so it's like more like on the other side of it, and then I'll add just a little bit more ooze. Just a tiny bit of ooze right there. Like that. Like that. Yeah. And then the butter goes right there. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go with it. I think it looks like gravy. I think I get what's supposed to be going. I mean, it's a little weird looking, but I don't think it's that bad. I know what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Hopefully someone else does too. Okay, let's just go with it. <laughs> Maybe not as clean as I was hoping, but you know what, it's not that bad. It's not too bad. We'll go like right here with the butter. Maybe I'm just being too critical on myself. I don't know. Okay. Bruh. Just about done, by the way. My glasses are falling off my face. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Okay, in, in, and outie, like that. Not the best job I've ever done sewing on crochet, but you know what, it works. It works, it looks like butter and gravy, I think. It looks a little funny, but it's not bad. It's, I think it's pretty clearly a turkey leg with butter and gravy on it and mashed potatoes. 
Well, it's what we did. I look at me trying to convince myself that I don't, that I'm, <laughs> I'm happy with it. I am. I just think, I don't know. The gravy, I feel like, I feel like I could do the gravy better. You know? It's, it's this little section that I added. I don't know if I like it. Not bad. It makes me hungry. I'm like really hungry now. Okay, guys. I think that's going to be it for today. What do we think? Well, I hope you like it. We didn't come up with a name for it, but that's okay. We don't need a name. It's nice to know that there's also an, a face in the bone that's in the body. That's kind of fun, too. All right, guys. Well, there is our gravy-covered turkey leg. I feel like his name should be Greg. Gregory. Gregory the turkey leg. It feels like Gregory is a good name. I don't know. I don't know. I'm indecisive today. Not too bad. Not too bad. It's no candy corn, though. I'll tell you that much. Look at that candy corn from last time. I still can't stop thinking about how awesome this candy corn is from last last uh, live stream. It's so good. <laughs> All right, guys. I will be live again next um, next Thursday starting at 1 p.m. We're going to be doing a live uh, birthday crochet along. It's going to be Club Crochet's sixth birthday. And with our new additions, I believe we have filled our fishbowl. So we're also going to be doing a gigantic giveaway for a starter kit. Special thanks again to uh, Tina and Cooper who donated or who did the, um, who tipped today. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> so, so weird. I love it. Okay, guys. Pasta La Pizza. Happy hooking. Uh, again, if you want to get a starter kit, they are on sale uh, today for the next week. It's going to be 25% off. Uh, it's kind of like now or never. So go uh, get a crochet kit if you'd like to. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Pasta La Pizza. Happy hooking. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, that's weird. I just realized my chat isn't updating there has been chat i was like no one's talking but it turns out maybe that the chat on my screen wasn't yeah my my i think my wi-fi is going weird yes okay thank you you oh Giannis names it uh franchi franchi who had both gravy and butter with mashed potatoes? Is that a thing? Sure, why not, dude? Zoe, yeah, butter with everything, dude. Um. Oh my gosh, Crochandro, I want to see your your cranberry cranberry. Post a picture of your cranberry. That sounds freaking adorable. Cranberry. I wish I wish that should have said that in the chat. That would have been a great one to also add. But I can't wait to see yours. Jamie thinks we should have added more gravy. I feel that. Okay, guys. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Corshandro said that they got the seasonal kit and scanned the QR. Portal 4 not found on which QR code? Uh, Which uh kit, Corshandro? Let me know which kit you're talking about. Um, It might be something on my end. It probably is something on my end that I messed up a link or something, and I'm shocked that no one's ever 
Yeah, put it on, post it on Discord or email me directly at louis at clubcrochet.com. Either one would be great. Um, yeah, it's probably just I messed up a link and for some reason no one has let me know about it. I don't know why. Um, but I'll fix that. Yeah, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving too. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Pasta Pizza, I'll be on again next Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, and oh my gosh, stop it. No, you hang up. Oh my god. Uh, sorry, wait, one more thing. Crescendo, try that QR code again in, uh, give it one hour. In one hour, try that QR code again. Um, okay. Thank you again for watching. Fast Pizza, happy hooking, and oh my gosh, no, you hang up. And also, let's stare at this adorable cat that's upside down for just a little bit. Just because, I mean, I mean, look at that kitty. Oh my god. He's so cute. I feel like I could just live stream this all the time and just be happy with it, you know? Wow. That's a cat. Okay. Bye.